How's everyone doing today? Got to get my rock on. I feel like uh, I haven't been rocking up that much this past week because we were away at Vid Summit, which rocks. It definitely rocks when you're at Vid Summit. Uh, but I uh, didn't have a lot of chance to sit down and uh, listen to music. I was mostly listening to people talk about um, growing YouTube channels and their experiences and meeting new people. It's good to be back. How you guys been doing since uh, I haven't been really on the uh, channel this past week because we've been so busy. But how's everybody doing in the chat? Let me see what's going on in here. Woot, there's the power of purpose. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, who else do we have in here? We got all kinds of people. Good morning, Amp to Glamp. Always Amp to Glamp. Man, I am Amp to Glamp. <laughs> Hello. There's my pal John, Motivation Theory running. John, we're going to hit 10K soon here? Do we hit it already? How close are we? Minutes? Seconds? <laughs> I can tell you a story, John. All of you. So for those of you, some of you might know, I um I spoke at Vid Summit with my pal Dean Emin, Um, and we were on... Just before Mr. Beast um, wrapped the whole thing up. So we were like, I think there was us, one other person, and then Mr. Beast and Daryl took the stage. And then, so like the final night, the big stage, we're all excited. Um, and Colin and Samir, I don't know if you guys know Colin and Samir, they're great YouTubers, are on the, are on the stage doing a presentation before us. And then we realized kind of halfway through their presentation that they're dangerously close to hitting a million subscribers, like right then. So they actually pull up their subscriber count, the rolling subscriber count on the screen. Um, and they start putting it in the background and they're like, well, you know, I don't know. It's not really about subscribers. And then they realize as they're wrapping up, like they're going to hit it right there, live on stage in front of huge ballroom full of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. It was just packed. And the, so D and I are backstage getting our like headset mics to try to figure out how to get it in my hair without causing a ruckus, right? <laughs> D's head was a little easier. He has a little less interference going on up there. So we, uh, we, uh, we're sitting backstage and we start hearing the crowd chanting, million, million, million. And it's getting louder and louder. And it's like rocking the room. You can feel the pulsation of the crowd. And we're like backstage, so we can't quite see what's going on because we're behind the whole curtains and everything in the in the ready room. And all of a sudden, the crowd erupts like like a, like someone hit a home run, right? You know that they hit the million. It was just crazy. They you know they finish up, they come back. There's like Colin and Samir and their whole team. There's like you know ten or twelve of them, and they're all hugging and they're crying and they're excited and they're high fiving. And Daryl's there and they're taking pictures all together. And it was this huge moment. And then D and I had to follow that. <laughs> we, we, had to, we had to go on after that. Talk about pressure, my friends. Talk about pressure. That was um, that was quite an event. Um, but we rocked it. Things were great when you got a guy like Dean Inman by your side. Um, it was a great presentation. The crowd was fantastic. So we were really uh, excited about that. But boy, uh, it reminded me of how you, you know, the idea, like sometimes we see creators like uh, comparing some, themselves to other creators, like how come they're doing that so well? Or how come they or me or, the, you know, and that comparison thing, comparison thing can be really tough because I think it, uh, I think it kicks the legs out of a lot of people. Like how come they're getting more views than me? Or how come they're getting more subscribers? Or, you know, the that kind of thing can be the thing that <clears throat> breaks your spirit and i gotta tell you I, you know if i had compared myself to colin and samir who were at the peak of their you know success right now uh, it would be it would hurt you know if that if that was the yardstick you know d and i went out there and we said well you know we're gonna do we're gonna do our thing we're gonna do what we do and we went out there and you know and we rocked it it was really great it was the crowd was so great and they really loved learning about how to um better grow up the youtube channel so it was uh it was a lot of fun What's this one? Uh, my comparison debt is very strong at the moment. It's hard to shake. Yeah, there's a, there's a saying. They say uh, comparison is the thief of joy. And it's an interesting saying because it's true. The minute you feel like you've accomplished something, if you start comparing it to someone else who seems to have more than you or more success or more subscribers or more views or whatever that thing is, you no longer enjoy your own success because you're always thinking, well, I, I just want to be better than them or as good as them. And why can't I? And it's the it's really, really hard. It's one of the worst things I think people can do as creators. The number one thing you can do is, is try to compare yourself to you. Try to do better each week than you did the previous week. That's that's really the space you want to live. But today we're going to be talking about YouTube channels, YouTube growth. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you guys right here in the chat. Throw, feel free to 
Um, throw some questions in chat here while we're talking. If you have things that you're struggling with, I put up a poll the other day. I just wanted to see what people were kind of feeling, um, what their vibe was on where they thought they needed help. I can show you what, how that poll went. It was kind of a cool poll because they now have, um, they got these new uh, features where you can put uh, images next to your polls, which is kind of cool. And I said, uh, you know, what's your biggest hurdle? And I gave four and then let them tell me whatever they wanted. Uh, of building an audience, video editing, time management, and revenue. And literally, in the order I stacked them is the order people went with. Building an audience seems to be the thing that really people struggle with more than anything. Video editing is about a quarter of it. Time management, which is my hardest one, was a, was a close third. And then revenue is only about 11%. And it's, that's probably, a, it's probably an interesting thing because I think if you start learning how to connect with a target audience... Those other things kind of fall into place, like figuring out how to you know, make reven- drive revenue if you, if you actually start growing a channel. The revenue gets a little bit easier um, once you get into a groove of connecting with a target audience. Learning how to manage your time becomes a little bit easier sometimes, depending on what's going on in your life. Um, video editing, I don't know if that ever gets easier. It's one of those things we're always constantly learning. I think all of those things we're constantly learning. But it was interesting that a lot of people really thought about um, building an audience was a big one. Let me get rid of some of this stuff here. But feel free to talk to me in the chat about what the things you're, uh, you've been wrestling with. And I'd like to, um, yeah, I'd like to take some questions for you and spend a little time with you guys because coming back from Vid Summit, I've got to, I got to hang with some really great people. I got to, uh, y- you name them, they were there. Nate from Channel Makers, good to see him. Um, Nick Nimmin, Roberto Blake, um, spent a lot of time with those guys. Um, the Starkoviches, Jim and Phil, who built, who were the original builders, uh, founders of TubeBuddy. Um, of course, Daryl, we talked to for a bit and, uh, you know, they're just like, uh, there's so many cool people I met, new people, new friends, Peter Hollins. He's great singer. Fantastic. Um, clueless bushcraft, clueless bushcraft, Tom, he's, he's crazy. He's from Minnesota. He's got a great TikTok channel. He's got a great YouTube channel. He's about to hit a hundred thousand subscribers. He's been, he's blew up on TikTok, but now he's here on, on YouTube trying to figure out how to get it going. And he was with the, there with the spread shop team, DJ from spread shop, of course, uh, my pal DJ Kaufman, the man uh, from Spread Shop. Always great to see him. I actually got him to sign. Can you see this? This is He's a professional cartoonist. Like, he used to work with Kevin Smith and those guys. Like, serious car- professional cartoonist. Um, comic book, ar- book artist. And I have one of his books, his hardcover books, comic book um, art. Uh, one of his stories. And I, I brought it with me. I'm like, DJ, you got to sign this for me. And I, got, I made him sign it for me. So that was really cool. This is a ton of fun. Um, let me look at what's going on in the chat here. Um, I just want to talk about, can we see your talk from Vid Summit on YouTube? You uh, you can't. They don't like just replay it for free, Esther. What they do is you can buy Vid Summit replay passes. Um, and you can see all of the uh, you can see all of the presentations there, which I usually get anyway. Because what happens is is it's not like there's only one presentation at a time. There's multiple rooms. There's different size rooms. There's a main stage, a smaller stages, uh, in different rooms. So there's there's all kinds of presentations going on. So I like getting the replay pass. It's like a couple hundred bucks, and you get to see sit at your own leisure and watch all of the presentations and learn all of the stuff at, at your own leisure. So that's what I usually do. Um, but they don't post them for free. That's obviously it's a paid event. It costs a ton of money to put on that that event. Huge, huge money. Um, let's see. I'm just kind of reading. Um, I'm trying to read through some of the things. Um, stand out from the rest. Is that one of the things you're wrestling with? Is that what you're saying, Nigel? How to stand out from the rest? <clears throat> Let me tell you something. One of the things I talked to um, a lot of creators about, and I talked to a lot of them when I was at uh, Vid Summit. Remember that it's not about standing out from people that are like you. It's about capturing the interest of your target audience when presented against their other interests. That's, um, that's something I think people don't always get. Uh, let me give you an example here. Uh, I hope that's what you're, you were saying. I'm, either way, I'm going to take it and run with it. So when we, uh, let me pull this up. Here we go. Uh, when you look at, see, now here's a homepage, right? <clears throat> this is YouTube Browse. Oh, there's Clueless Bushcraft right there, that guy from Vid Summit. Um, th- you're going to find that when people find your videos in places like Browse, which is the homepage, it's going to, here's me, like, here's a typical example, right? There's me up in the corner. Um, and then there's, you know, Wolfgang Van, Wolf, wow, jeez, I can't even speak right now. Wolfgang Van Halen, 
um, playing at the Taylor Hawkins benefit because I'm a huge music fan. Uh, here's Peter McKinnon because I'm a huge Peter McKinnon fan. Speak, uh, Spark Your Speaking, a channel that I've been working with recently. Uh, more of that, Wolfgang, more Roberto. This is the kind of thing. This is all my interests and stuff I've been watching. So your video might suddenly be presented like right here. This is like a trending this is a trending uh, topic, but this might be your video. And the question becomes, how do you get me to click your video? And, and standing up from the rest, not channels that are like you, but against my other interests. And that's one of the things I think the creators wrestle with is they get so wrapped up in being <clears throat> competing against other similar channels that they forget most of the time that they're not competing against them. That works in search a bit. Uh, but you got to remember that, you know, more than 70% of the views on YouTube every day don't come from search. So really what you want to get good at is learning to speak the language that the target audience you're trying to reach, uh, is triggered by. And that's as simple as getting really good at that conversation. A lot of channels that I work with, I'll go to their channel and they're sort of all over the place. Like one video is sort of about one thing and another video is like not even really related to that topic and they're, and they're not making it clear in their titles and their thumb, thumbnails what's in it for the viewer. So a big thing really is <clears throat> making sure from the outside that stuff is really strong and understandable, simple and easy to understand. And then once people click and they're inside, don't waste their time. Get right to the thing. Uh, just like here, you know, we started up and we got right into talking about YouTube. Like don't... Don't do all of that like, hey, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, don't forget to smash the like button and hit the subscribe and down and share this video out. And if you have, leave a comment down below. You know, like all that stuff that just pushes people away. Just get to it. Whatever the conversation is, like people are there, they want to they you know, get the value of whatever is your, vi your video covers, whether that's music, entertainment, could be travel, could be cooking, could be, you name it, a whole host, host of things. So make sure that when you, um, you're trying to reach a target audience that you, get, you give, them that, give them the goods and package it really well so they understand why they want to watch it um, and then they click and watch it. Same with you, like why would any of you click and watch a video? You know, what's, what's the main reason everyone here in the chat clicks a video? Usually because you want to learn something or, or it looks interesting or curiosity is a big one. If you can, if you can uh, trigger some curiosity, that can be all the difference in the world. Um, took feedback on a board in a positive way, but I have such a great sense of humor. I am dining out. I did change my channels. Great. Which feedback was this? My friend, my friend, dipstick. <laughs> D stick one spearfishing. Yeah. Hey, uh, you see, you still have that crazy name though. You do have spearfishing in it. You've added spearfishing. Um, I would still get rid of, this is another thing. When we talk about being clear, that's a tough name to remember. What's your channel name? D stick one hyphen spearfishing. Really tricky one, you know, to, to remember. And I remember, I don't remember what D stick one came from. That's one of those things I think people sometimes have a, like an Instagram name or a Twitch handle or whatever that is. And they bring it over and they go, that's going to be my channel name. I would say, listen, either use your own personal name, like I did, Daniel Batal. You see people do this all day long. Daryl Leaves, Nick Nimmin, Dean Nimmin, Roberto Blake, Peter McKinnon, uh, Casey Neistat. Yeah, uh, you know, do that or do or or make a bla a branding play, where you you know like uh, I don't know D stick one doesn't relate to anybody. That's only personal to you. So I would take that spear fishing thing and I'd probably start right off the bat with uh, you know, turning that into something. If you're gonna do either put your you know spear fishing with maybe D stands for like Daryl or Daniel spear fishing with Daniel or something like that. Um, I think it's important to be clear and simple. Don't confuse things. Don't make it any harder for the viewer to understand why they'd want to watch your content in any piece of your channel, whether that's the name, the channel art, um, the you know anything. Just keep it simple. Figure out what your, your branding's going to be. If it's going to be a personal brand and you're going to try to build your name, then just go with your name. If you're going to build a brand where you're using words that aren't your name, then make sure those words are extremely clear, right? Very clear, easy to understand. Because uh, that is what's going to be able to connect with the viewer when they see it in an instant. They see your name, they'll, they'll get what it is. And they might get the spearfishing, but trying to remember D stick one dash spearfishing is a lot. Uh, I'm scrolling through here. I'm just trying to see what people are saying. We're so excited for our up upcoming consultation with you, Daniel. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, excited to talk to you as well. Has anyone else in the chat had a consultation with Daniel? We're getting so pumped for it. We'll see if we've got any an answers in there anywhere. Um, I've done a lot of them. I've done a lot of them. We have a lot of repeat um, clients that I do work with because I've worked, I think I've talked about this, I've worked with really small channels and I've worked with some of the biggest out there. I've worked with musicians, Hollywood movie stars, TV stars, some of the sharks from Shark Tank. I've worked with a lot of different kind of creators. 
And I love um I love working with people. I think it's uh it's one of my favorite things is to watch them really start crushing their goals. So I, I love doing the consultations because it allows me to get people on track and really hit uh, the numbers. This year at Vid Summit, we had my, one of my coaching clients, Gabriella from Glam Girl Gabby. She just got her silver play button. She was one that she was a coaching client since she had a couple thousand subs. Um, so she's been with me a couple of years, just got her silver play button. Many a time she was like, I, I'm going to, I can't take it. It's not working. I'm going to quit. Had to kick her into shape. <laughs> You're not quitting. Stay on it. We got this. It takes time. Sure enough, now she's, she quit her other job. Uh, it's just, it's, she's blowing up. It's just amazing to see people do it. Question from Drew Project. I've been doing music video covers for some time. I'm stuck with musicians watching me and not growing. Daryl once told me I should show my process, become more of an influencer. Your opinion? Uh, your opinion? I agree. I tend to agree with Daryl. Well, here's the thing. Um, the age of making videos for music, I really, in my heart of hearts, think is dead. Like, just playing music is very dead. Um, MTV did it years ago when I was a kid. <laughs> Can you imagine I was a kid once? That's how old that, that format was. It's been played out. Everybody's seen it. Cover songs. I mean, everybody's seen a cover song. It's like, what are you, the greatest cover musician ever? Maybe if you're fantastic. If you were, Drew, if you, I'm not saying you're not, but Drew, you have to be so good. You have to be so fantastic, utterly like, you know, you wouldn't be worrying about your YouTube channel because you'd be so good that, you, you know, it, you wouldn't worry about driving views. Um, you, people would watch you because you were that good. When you see people like, um, who's done some good covers recently? La what's her name? Lainey. Uh, who, did the, who did the Fleetwood Mac cover that was really good? Lainey Gardner. Lainey Gardner did a Fleetwood Mac cover and... Uh, let me see if I can put this up here and it'll show it. There we go there. Let me hide that for a second. That's Lainey right there. So she got 31 million views a year ago doing her Fleetwood Mac cover. Now, not all of hers do well. If you look at the, she followed it up with another. That got 4.5 million views and 1.5. I think she went on, I think she got picked up one of the Jonas Brothers, um, uh, brought either hot, signed her on a, to a label and they took her on tour. So she's doing really well, but she's like amazing. Even Stevie Nicks was uh, commenting on the video and like, wow, you crushed it. So the trick is, is you have to be either amazing or, which amazing is good. People don't, you know, nobody wants to watch a bad musician, and I'm not saying you are. Or do something different. You really have to do something that people would recognize. I, I like um, Charlie Puth. Do you know who Charlie Puth is, Drew? Uh, he was a musician that was... Um, he, he did part of the... I think well, I'm trying to think of what songs you might know him from. Light switch, kind of pop stuff. He did the the theme song from that that uh, I think it was the very last Fast and Furious movie. I think so. Um, but what he does is he started. He was a TikToker, and he literally started talking about his process. Like he'd go, "I have an idea for a song," and he'd start talking like beatboxing the drums in his head, and he'd play. He'd start writing it, and he was playing that out. And and by the time, I mean, he would build the song piece by piece and get the pe people super excited. He's, he's very talented, but he'd bring you inside his process of building it. Um, and that, that like worked wonders for him because when he drops a new song, he goes to the top, you know, I think his last one went up to maybe top two or three and trending on YouTube, millions of views. Um, cause he just crushed it. He just came out in a different way. I mean, really like, you know, short form content, like talking right in and playing his thing and editing it real quick, real, real smart. Um, imagery different things i've seen people do stuff like you know musicians go uh you know i played my i played my new song for my girlfriend to get a reaction right and it's like this sort of different take where it's like you, the, the guy's like you know the girl's like sitting like in the car and she doesn't realize and the song comes on and, you know and the girl's like what wait is it is that you and then the reaction becomes part of it right so you get super excited watching people react in a situation, he put his song in a situation where he had his girlfriend, who didn't know the, the song was done, react to it. <clears throat> um, there's a couple of musicians I've seen, country musicians, that will literally, um, they'll like, they'll wander around and like stop people and play the new song. Go, tell me what you think of this. Stop in the streets, you know. Tell me what you think of this song, you know. <laughs> so it's a lot of times it's that idea of just playing music and making music videos, kind of a dead format. Just be do something different. Think differently. Do something different. That makes people go. That was such a different experience. I don't want to see, I don't want to see the same thing over and over that I've seen a hundred times. Um, and I want to watch people gamers who just play games. I've seen it, you know. So try to think about different ways to to really intrigue the audience. Let me see. Um, I'm just right reading through here. 
Um, my issue is with branding. My f- channel is for people new to cooking, either at home or professionally, but I uh, had a channel v- review by vidIQ that didn't come across to them. That didn't come across to them. How do I fix? Channel, you had a channel review by vidIQ that didn't come across them. I'm not quite sure. I don't know if I understand that statement completely, but I'll pull up your channel. I'll take a look. Uh, let's see. 86 isn't one of those examples. 86th Street Project. Um, right off the bat, I don't know that I would know what your channel's about from the name. I always say those things like if you're going to use branding and you're not going to use your own name, is that your restaurant or is that where you live? I don't know what that is. So one of the things I would think about, my man, <clears throat> is why did you choose the name and how does it help people recognize that thing? Um, if you make it harder for people to understand why they would want to be engaged with your channel, 86 Street Project, if I said that to the people in the chat and said, all right, tell me what the channel's about, I, I don't think in a billion years they'd guess, n- unless they got lucky and just yell things until they got, you know, they wouldn't know what that was about. So be careful with choosing every every single thing um, you do in your channel should, should make sense to the value prop. Let me pull this thing up. Uh, so here we go again. Um, 86th Street for new and aspiring cooks. Well, here's here's one of the things. Like, what's the value prop? You, you said um, you said your your channel for people new to cooking, either at home or professionally. That's two completely different people, my friend. People who are just new to cooking at home or want to do it professionally. That's completely different. That's a completely different target audience. I don't. How do you say like, yeah. I'm, I make content for people who really don't cook and professional chefs. I, th- I think what you're doing is your 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 targeting is off. Like, it's really funny. D and I um, did a presentation. Uh, we just came back from Vid Summit, and we did we made an example of what we thought a uh, we built a we built a channel live on stage for people who might like what we thought a good looking channel is. Hold on, let me see if I can pull this up. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to share these slides, but maybe I can share one with you. <laughs> let me see if I can find this quickly. Um, but that's what we did was we had built this idea of uh, a cooking channel right up on stage. We showed a channel that was really poorly optimized, and then we found one that we built one ourselves and said, well, let's just, let's just show you how to build one. Give me one second here, and I'll find this for you. Uh, I don't know. I can't really do this. Let me just see if I can pull up a single slide. I think I'm allowed to do that. A single slide. I don't think Daryl will get mad at. Will he? I hope not. <laughs> if I get yelled at, I'm blaming it on you. <laughs> Let me just scroll here. I'll get this thing. Hold on one second. Let me find it. Um, uh, let me go full screen with this. Uh, hold on a second. I will get this. Give me one second. I'm a little slow today. I'm feeling a little slow. All right, so let me share this in which they, um, first of all, um, look at, let me, let me look at your channel here. Hold on a second. Um, let me do this. Here's your channel, and let me look at what you got going on, all right? Uh, let's start here. This is your channel, okay? Now, looking at your channel, I, the only even thing that even begins to make me think that this is about cooking is this. For new and aspiring cooks, I you know it doesn't. Is that what you're doing? You're teaching people to be cooks. That's a really niche market. What I would think you'd be doing is teaching people how to cook cool food. You know, they don't tell people who the target audience is. Teach them the thing. So you're trying to t- force the audience here, which doesn't make sense. Ton of shorts. Then there's uploads, which you, I think I've said a hundred times. Um, that doesn't. If I told people, you know, in the chat, I'm going to give you some hints about what the na- what this channel's about. You ready? You tell me when you guess it. 86th Street Project. Anybody? Anybody know what this channel's about? Here, let me help you again. Uploads. Right? Just like all this stuff is not helping. Um, you've got all your shorts up here, which that's great. I can't wait till they finish putting the shorts tab. I don't like shorts on the homepage of desktop. I think it ruins the experience. But let me show you something else instead of that. Right? So you saw what yours looked like. Let's take a look at that one more time so you can see. Here's your channel. And this is what you're considering um, a well-optimized channel that you think represents that value proposition at a glance, right? You're making it say, okay, yeah, I can totally understand what this channel's about. Everyone should get it. It's, clearly, it's about food. Now, let me show you a channel that we built uh, for our presentation. Uh, hold on a second. Let me see if you can see this. Okay, you ready? Let me show you again. This is the channel we built. See the difference? 
20 Minute Meals, name of the channel. Fast and easy recipes for everyone. Big featured content right up there with big bold pictures of things you're going to cook. Playlists that aren't uploads. Playlists that are quick and delicious chicken dinner recipes with nice descriptions underneath those playlists. Uh, title, you know, So the titles are all great. The, the titles and the playlists are great. The description's great. Featured content's great. This is the kind of stuff you need to think about. The way you build, cha- we build channels here. We're building channels for um, an experience. And when we want the viewers to have a specific experience so that they will c- become engaged with our content, if I come to your channel and I'm, re- I'm wrestling to figure out exactly what it's about, you got to dial that in. You got to get that working. You got to start thinking like, wait a minute, I need to take this seriously. I need to make sure that all of the things on my channel out of context absolutely represent my value proposition really well. Um, and help people understand why they'd want to watch, and then organize the content with intent. You know, uploads is the default playlist that you get on um, on YouTube before you've done any customization. So if you were like, "Yeah, I don't, I, I haven't done any customization whatsoever," you you get there, it just says uploads, which is just a big box that YouTube starts sticking videos into in a, in a, one after another, no optimization whatsoever. So step number one. Take your channel seriously, okay? And I'm not saying you don't. I'm saying take it more seriously. Think about all the ways you can get this better. I'm talking to everybody here about how you can optimize that channel better. That's um, that's huge, huge stuff for uh, for engagement. Experience is everything. One of the things that people don't understand is how important engagement really is. Let me show you something. Um, let me show you this. I had a video that was on my channel for quite a while, and it was driving, it, it peaked, I think it drew a little over half a million views, and it peaked, went, you know, did way up, and then it kind of settled down for a long period of time, like eight or 10, 12, maybe a year, eight or 10 months, 12 months. It was driving like 200 views a day, and I made one change to that video, one change, one change, and you can see it right here. See that big spike? In 24 hours, I tripled the views. And I brought the, where it leveled out afterwards was much higher than it was before down here. So it went from about 200 views a day up to about 630 views a day and then leveled back out to well over two, like two, you know, 260, 270. Anyone take a guess in the chat what I did with that video? Um, Just shout it out. Shout out what you think the change I made was. Uh, Because I think it's interesting to change the way people think about YouTube and the way the experience can really uh, improves your chances of connecting with an audience. <clears throat> Yell it out. Come on. I'm not, don't be afraid. I got a slow chat here, but uh, change the title. Someone said, uh, Esther said, change the title. I did not change the title. Title remained exactly the same. So that wasn't changed. Thumbnail. Excellent guess as well. Um, nope. I did not change the thumbnail. Thumbnail was exactly the same. Um, change the title and thumbnail. Nope. I didn't change either of those. Exactly the same. And that's what everyone keeps guessing it, right? Um, you know who got it right? Uh, Midnight Madness 4 by 4 Yeah, he knows because he was at Vid Summit. <laughs> That's how he knows. <laughs> Charlie and I were hanging out there. I took that and I put it as the first video in a playlist at the top of my homepage so that when people came to my channel, you know, they saw the channel art, the channel trailer, and the very first playlist, it was in the number one position. I moved it right up front, basically like... The idea is like if you take, you know, when you're in the supermarket and they put like the the stuff they really want you to buy right on the end caps or like in the candy aisle, like right when you check out by the register, because stuff that's more visible is going to get engaged more. But what's really interesting is um, the vast majority of those views. Guess what? Now, you guys know traffic sources? Who's good at traffic sources? Guess where the majority of these views came from? Shout it out in the chat. You see that spike, you know that I moved it into, all I did was move the position of where people could find it, not on YouTube, but on my channel, right? This is why I'm telling you, optimizing these channels is so important. You think that, oh, it's your channel is just a place to stick stick all your videos and, you know, it's the video itself that's important. Well, I'm telling you, it's channels that are important too. So guess where the, guess the traffic source. Uh, Let's see. Great guess right here. Uh, power of purpose channel page, right? Because channel pages would make sense. Home home page is uh, one of your channel pages. It's the main channel pages uh, that usually drive views. Uh, but it it was a piece of that. But here's the funny thing. End screen. No, it wasn't end screen. Channel visits close. Suggested. Close. All close. Browse. Browse. That big, huge spike 
Um, out of that 600 and something views, 400 and some odd of them were browse. And the reason it was browse was because people started coming to my channel homepage. They saw that there. They were like, oh, that's a cool video right in their face. Clicked it and started watching it. And that sent traffic signals back to YouTube that they interpreted. And they went, oh, this video that we, we knew quite a bit about, it had been driving a lot of views. It had over half a million views. It was driving 200 views or so every day. Not a ton of views anymore. It kind of ran out its cycle. <clears throat> but the minute YouTube saw something change, like they went, whoops, something changed. People are interested in this video suddenly. I did that. I did that by highlighting it on my homepage and it immediately triggered browse. Like J YouTube jumped right in and said, well, let's start putting it right in front of other people that we um, know watch Daniel's content or we think would be interested in Daniel's content based on uh, you know the kind of channel I've grown and what kind of traffic signals I've sent back over time. And it popped, popped right up. <clears throat> so thinking about, thinking about your channel homepage is, is a big advantage, a good strategic advantage and building it in this very specific way to get people down into the view funnel and getting them watching more content. Really, really important. Making it clear, making it easy for them to understand uh, what your channel's about is it can make all the difference. All right. So one of the very first things you should start with is make sure your packaging is right. Get your channel art put together. Get your, your you know, your channel name. Have it make sense. Um, get some featured content up there. Get rid of uploads. Get rid of unboxings and reviews and all those things. Let's get some really good, well orchestrated content. You know, really makes a big difference. Let me go over here. Uh, hey Daniel, I've been making uh, a lot of gaming videos, and I'm not coming up with content that gets viral. So how can I improve it? Uh, shooting for viral videos is <clears throat> is like uh, is like trying to become the heavyweight champion of the world uh, in whatever sport you like. Boxing, um, don't do it. Don't, you know, trying to get viral videos is, um, is silly. <laughs> I have videos that have over 2 million views. I unlisted a bunch of them. I actually unlisted my highest performing video. Um, but it didn't happen overnight. It didn't go viral. It took years, you know. Build content that connects over, that connects. And if it can, if it, depending on the niche, if you're a utility, if you're a gamer, that's kind of stuff that could connect quickly or could um, connect over time. Um, one of the things that I think is, what are you doing on your games? Like basic, let me go check a look at what you got. First of all, it says basic YouTuber. That's the name of your channel. How would I know that that's a gaming channel? <laughs> basic YouTuber. I'm a basic YouTuber. I would probably say, and it's ba ba like basic yt -ber? Tough name. Tough name. I don't know that I would, um, I don't know that that would definitely trigger me uh, right off of the bat. But I, I gotta, I gotta love this, guys. Check this out. This is awesome. <laughs> Basic Y tuber, Y T tuber. I don't have a good channel description. <laughs> now that's honesty right there, folks. I don't have a good channel description. Uh, but let's see what it says. What is it you do? Why are you stalking me? You okay? I don't know what that means, but I'm not gonna say that. Um, yeah, man, it's just you're all over the place. I don't know what this is. I can see some gaming, but the bonk challenge. Cold, parentheses, venge.io, hashtag shorts, stay with me, blog post, montage, hashtag short. Um, I, don't, I don't know that I understand this has to stop. You're making it very hard for me to understand um, what, what's going on here. Man, if you're a gamer, I think you need to, you need to figure out what you're going to do that's going to separate you from the pack. And that really triggers people. It looks like, I don't know what your, uh, the bonk challenge. I'm trying to look at the venge. I don't necessarily know the games, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, looks like it's got some some kind of a, a block style game in here. Uh, looks like Minecraft down here. Start figuring out like what other Minecrafters like. Being unique is so is so important. There's a there's a Minecraft channel. Let's see if I can remember which one it is. Um, yeah, only walk on go. Yeah, this let me see if I can find Minecraft. Who's been pushing it? Um, let me see. Um, so there's the transform all. Uh, this is some of the stuff you want to think about, right? Like stuff that drives some views. 657,000 views in a day. I survived 4,800 days in hardcore Minecraft, right? So this is, they're always trying to do something more than just gaming. They're trying to create um, a, a, a spectacular uh, event. I survived 100 days on a survival island in Minecraft hardcore, right? So they were doing challenges inside of, of Minecraft. Um, here's one here at the bottom. Uh, it's 4 million views from a month ago. Preston plays, right? He's crushing it. 
uh, Minecraft, but everything I tur- I touch turns to, and then it turns to whatever you know. There's one. Um, there's one I saw that was um, Minecraft, but I only walk in a straight line. I thought that was great. Like he, the guy, like he, no matter what happened, he wouldn't turn. He just kept walking straight, and whatever you know, he just tried to survive. Whatever he had to walk into, he's like, I can't turn. I have to keep going straight. Or Minecraft, but I only walk. Uh, but I, but I can't step on anything gold. Uh, so things like that, like a different angle. I'm not saying you should do that. But when you look at what's connecting, what people are doing, just playing Minecraft isn't enough. you got to be really clear, why would someone watch your gaming content? Gaming is a tough niche. A lot of people love gaming, but you either have to be the best player in the world, which is really hard, or you have to do something that's very different. Um, Dara Leaves gave, gave a great um, piece of advice on a panel we were on. I think we were talking on Clubhouse or something. And a gamer asked a very similar question. He's like, well, how do I stand out as a gamer? And Daryl had a great piece of advice. He's like, this is what, if I were a gamer, I'd, uh, I'd call up one of my buddies and I'd, we'd get on the same game and I'd have each of us get like on a treadmill. And every time one of us died uh, fighting each other, like the other, whoever died you know, first had to you know, uh, speed up the, uh, the treadmill and then raise the inclination and then keep playing, right? And whoever gets, you know, whoever, whoever tires out or gets thrown off the treadmill first loses. So that was like an interesting take, doing something different. You can't just kind of throw a bunch of stuff up there and go, how come people don't love my home movies? Because there's no reason for them to watch. You have to really make sure when you build something, really think about um, what's in it for them, okay? And that's not just gaming, everything. Really think about it, what's in it for the viewer, and why would, why would a broad target audience read, uh, watch your content? Uh, let me see. How do you know if your niche audience is tight enough? I have one bucket, astrology. Too narrow and not evergreen. I want to expand it to be metaphysic meat now. Wait, but I don't want to confuse YouTube. I would say, uh, I hope I get your name right here. Is it Sunita? I hope that's right. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, you have one bucket. Astrology isn't one bucket. Astrology is like a wide niche, I would say. Um, metaphysics meets business. Um, yeah, I, that's, I think, you know, astrology, is. this is the thing that I, I would think about. Everybody in the chat, think about it this way. Like, Sunita, you're doing, it says success with Sunita. If, if I knew that that was, uh, reading your name, I don't know that I would understand that that's an astrology channel. Let me pull it up just so I can get a better vibe of what's going on. I think most of the problems on YouTube is uh, that people do not do a great job of building a value proposition. And by that, I mean your ability to... Um, uh, be able to tell somebody in a simple sentence three things. The first thing is what your channel, W, think three W's. First W being what your, what is your channel about, niche. Now, if you were astrology, then that would be your niche. The second W would be uh, who, who's your target audience. I don't mean like, you know, how old are they, the demographics, where they live. I really mean the interest based. You know, what, what interest do you share with them? Why would they watch that stuff based on their interest? And that's the last W is the why. Why would they choose to watch your content as opposed to anything else that they might find interesting? Not just similar channels, but other channels that, um, that, that are served to them based on their interests. Like for me, when people ask me about my value proposition, I say, you know, I, I help creators make better, better video content, put it up onto YouTube and grow an audience around it. So there you go. What's the niche? Well, it's, you know, YouTube growth. Uh, who's the target audience? People who are putting videos onto YouTube and trying to grow a channel. Um, why would they watch my channel? Because I'm going to help them do it. I'm going to help them figure out how to do it properly and actually hit the goals they want. So it's pretty straightforward right from my value prop, the what, who, and the why. So when I say to you, like, I would, I would ask that question, Sunita. I would say, like, what's your value proposition? And you should be able to tell me very quickly, I help so-and-so do such and such a thing, you know, uh, whatever. Um, if, if you're a utility channel, which I think you are. One of the things I'll say to you right off the bat is mistakes, very common mistakes we make. Let me pull you out of here for a second. I can pull your question up. Here's a great one, right? Look at all the distractions you've got up here. One, it's like all this stuff in the background that makes reading this very hard for my eyes, all that, that wavelength stuff. Um, you've decided to put a giant subscribe bell and a button bell that is non-clickable. So all it is is a distraction. You've decided to put in an Instagram link saying, hey, welcome to my channel. Now leave and go to Instagram. Not sure that was your goal. Um, uh, you've got a link that says website. If you do have a website, I, I don't know why you're pushing people towards it because it's pushing people off platform. Uh, but if I was going to put something up there, I definitely wouldn't use the text website. I think I would, you know, it's like, that's like naming a video 
video. You know, like put, try to put something compelling up there if there's a reason for them to visit. And there better be a reason if, if you're pushing people off platform. You want to think about maybe you should put a email opt-in page. Maybe there's a free download or something you're giving away. Um, but you get a lot of stuff that's distracting and pushing people all over the place. I'd also say the same thing I said before, like popular uploads. Popular to who? You know, get these things out of here. Let's stick with the stuff that maybe the Mars retrograde in Gemini 2022 to 2023 means something more to the people you're trying to reach. At least you've got descriptions and something a little more focused. This doesn't need to be here. Um, and a lot of this is live streams. It looks like stream, stream, streamed. Again, uploads, get rid of that. There's a lot of stuff here that just really isn't helping me understand this channel. And if I saw these things out of context, I would have trouble understanding why I would want to become invested in that. Um, you're leaning on live streams a lot, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, but if the streams aren't driving the growth you want to drive, then don't lean on them so much. Usually edited content's going to get you more growth. You've got 29 subscribers right now. How old is the channel, my friend? Uh, 2007, but I don't know how long you've really been publishing to it. Hold on a second. Let's go with the oldest. Yeah, only about four months you've been really publishing here. So I would, yeah, I try to figure out um, what your angle is. Try to decide, like, who, who's your target audience? Why are they going to watch your content? What's the, what's the interest? And then once you get that dialed in, and it might be business, right? Like, if you're doing a business thing, like how to use astrology to, in, to uh, improve your uh, your to grow your business or to, to become a better, uh, to become better in your business or to become more focused in your business, then that could be a cool thing, right? Then it would have a very specific crowd where it's not just astrology because astrology can mean a lot. So really think about your value prop, get it dialed in, and then try making some content that isn't just astrology, that, but that's focused, you know, that anyone can get astrology anywhere. So it's very hard for you to compete in that, but you might be able to say something to people that really triggers them that they didn't get somewhere else. Like you may be able to really go like, oh, you know, um, you know, how do you, you know, how do, how your, you know, your astrological sign might impact, uh, you know, your ability to get new customers at, you know, at your, at your job or your business. You just, you know, figure out a different angle, figure, figure out a way to make it interesting. So it's not just astrology. It's, it's a very specific thing that it's applied to in a very specific target audience you're trying to reach. Uh, here's a question. I'm a rookie YouTuber, but professional business owner. I've branded my channel. Oh, have I? Have I branded my channel correctly for growth? I average 20,000 views per month. Nice. Uh, any advice for me is priceless. Thanks. Yeah. Elite Landscapes Life Stories. Um, have you branded it properly? There's a little weirdness in there. It's a lot of words. I think if, it, if it's a landscaping uh, company, I'm guessing you are, because that's what it says here, I probably would lose the life stories. I feel like that's a little much. I feel like, you know, you lost me. <laughs> you know, like if I saw Elite Landscapes, I go, oh, it's a landscaping channel. Then Elite Landscapes Life Stories. It's like, well, he's also giving me his life stories, maybe? I don't, you know, I think you don't need that. Um, but let me let me pull you up. Let's take a look at what's going on over here. Um, elite Landscapes Life Stories. Yeah, I think you could probably lose the life stories thing. I don't know that that's, um, that's really helping you. Uh, here's the channel. Let me pull this on the screen here really quickly. So we're looking at this channel. Um, let me pull your comment up. Um, cool picture, but there's nothing else up here. I like the lawn says a lot, right? With that nice cross pattern mode thing. And that's looks, you know, it looks pretty nice. So that really sells it. Um, I wish the color was boosted on this. I'm looking at this and I'm like, man, this lawn right here looks a heck of a lot better than this lawn right here. This is a, this is actually a better picture with the fence and the tractor. I actually like that. I wish you had something more like this up there. I think it looks a little better. Um, and I think I would have probably put, I think I get it. I don't even think you need a whole lot here, but if it's like, you know, if you had had in the law up above, maybe up in the trees here said elite landscapes up in the channel art, um, and then a bit of a value prop. That's the question that I'm wondering about. If you're a business, one of the mistakes people make is they bring their business to YouTube and they go, Oh, I'm going to build a channel. That's going to help drive awareness to my business. And the people who do that usually struggle a bit because, what you're trying to do um, is make sure that you have a, a reason for people to go there, right? And if you're just telling stories about landscaping, uh, knowledge is power. I'm going to read your about tab, okay? Knowledge is power in life and lawn care. So you're like a lawn care motivation channel? I'm try I I'll figure this out. Come along for a real-life experience as a small business owner. After 30 years in the lawn care industry, I'm still smiling and spreading good vibes. Yeah, you know what? Uh, don't, put that in your, don't put that in your about. Your job here isn't to make people smile. Don't tell people, hey, I'm going to make you smile. Um, 
what you want to tell people is what is it you do? You know, like, uh, you know, if it's like uh, if you're telling people, teaching people things about landscaping, that's cool. Um, if you're, you know, if you if they're, if I don't know about the, I don't know how many people want to well, come here and go like, I wish there was a landscaper who would give me life advice. Um, I'm not saying that you don't do that well. I'm just saying that for new people on the outside, why? What's the? What's the? From the outside looking in, why do they think that they should be watching? If I saw any of these things, I'd be like, um, "Let me see what's been going on here." River Rock Project forward slash forward slash forward slash is money worth stress and truncation. So that's one of those things. Like I don't even really build the empire. Stay solo. Decision time. This says nothing to me. I don't know what this video is about up in the upper. Is that anybody? Can anybody in the chat? Let's go right to the chat. Can everybody see this? Let me pull a magnifying glass on this. Anybody, tell me what this video here is about. River Rock Project is money worth stress and build the empire, stay solo, decision time. Yell, yell it out in the chat if you would be able to, at a glance, be able to understand, A, what this video is about, and B, if you would watch it. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down based on, not thumbs down like you don't like it, just a thumbs down meaning you, I, I don't think you can understand it. And thumbs up, it's like, yeah, totally get it. I would click that all day long because um, I'm having trouble and maybe it's just me. Maybe uh, maybe the chat knows something that I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know, kind of a mm, smiley face. <laughs> um, thumbs down, Doesn't David doesn't quite get it, unclear. See, this is that thing is I think one of the problems you're having here, my man, it's just the, the, the lack of clarity about why people, um, there's a nope, um, just why people would watch. And I think that's, okay, let me just see if I can get this. Uh, let me just see. This video is about trying to decide to be a solo landscaper or start a franchise. Maybe. Maybe it is. Um, a build, building a lawn empire. Yeah, I mean, who's interested in, I don't know anybody wakes up and says, I want to build a lawn empire. I think you have to be careful here when you put stuff together and think about how you're going to reach the, reach the broadest target audience. I don't. I, there has to be some reason that people want to click and watch, and I think um, um, I think it has to really speak to them. And when I start looking at what has driven a few more views, um, that's compelling. That's when we start seeing stuff like that got 1,200 views. See, that's a standout in the last five videos. And it says, would you hire a female for lawn care and but truncation? And it says truncation. What is the actual title? And landscaping help. So that's an interesting, she said it, not me. I don't, I don't know. So I guess you're, see, there's something kind of interesting. Um, you try to trigger people by saying, hey, would you, would you hire a female landscaper? And people go, even if I don't care about landscaping, I, it might be an interesting conversation on, um, using it around landscaping, but sort of the conversation of, you know, are, are, can, are women just as good as men when it comes to this job or, or what people think or who knows? I don't know what, I don't know exactly where you're going, but at least there I get it. There's, I get a conversation and maybe I would stop and go, Hey, I wonder what people, because the thumbnail says she said it, not me. Maybe I don't, I don't know what the answer is. So it's it kind of interesting to me. And I think it was interesting to other people. That's why I drove 1200 views. So I think there's always an angle you have to figure out what it is you're going to do, my man. Like figure out how to how to get that thing really connecting. Um, when you start talking about very specific um, gear and replacements for lawn care, uh, that seems to trigger some people. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, grass mowing world record overgrown. That got some views. I'm trying to read. Got truncated too. 127 acre college campus. 100, yeah, so it says it in the, what got truncated you actually put up in here. It's a little hard to read, but 127 acres of overgrown grass, college campus, grass mowing world record. So that was kind of an interesting, that got 2,300 views. You took it outside of it, like the, you, you actually created like, you know, you landscape, you mow, and this was like an interesting thing, like, wow, it's this massive thing of overgrown grass that you were mowing. Those kind of interesting things seem to connect with your target audience. So what I would do is lean on the things that seem to be working with you. So the, you know, we were talking about the gaming channel before and doing something different, right? Just talking about lawn care is one thing, but telling, um, I know you say like stories. I don't know that that needs to be in the, ch the channel name, but I think like when you do tell stories that are around the topic, it's interesting. I was talking to a bunch of people um, recently. I actually, I had a lunch with uh, 
with Matt Geelan from um, Electric Monster, who's like he's the biggest audience grower on uh, YouTube. He actually works with the YouTube channel, and he's worked with a Good Mythical Morning and uh, Rhett and Link, uh, all kinds of channels. You name it, he's worked with them. Um, and he's added billions of additional views to all these channels, so he, he knows his stuff. Uh, and we were talking about the next phase of what we thought was going to happen on YouTube. And because it seems everything is hyper-focused right now, there's a lot of big, like, Mr. Beast and crazy, you know, oh, my God, crazy things happening. And it's faster and faster and faster and all blown out. And he's, you know, we were talking about what we thought might happen next. And I told him, I think YouTube gonna ha- is going to go into, what, like, a, the grunge phase. Do you remember like do you remember in music when it was like all these bands that were long haired bands and they were like playing like metal and stuff and it was like really like hair out to here and makeup and it was just, you know, theatrics and everything was huge. And along come a bunch of kids, you know, they had long hair too, but you know, a bunch of kids from like uh, you know, Seattle. And they're just playing something that doesn't sound so formula. And they didn't care about all the makeup and theatrics. And they just wanted to make good songs. And they wanted to talk about They want to play just like everyone else. And it took off because it was different. It felt honest. It felt sincere. And I think that, that, that that's the thing we start talking about is, has anybody here ever watched any of the Discovery Channel uh, shows, the programming on there? It's thumbs up if you have. Tell me if you have. If you have a favorite Discovery Channel or History Channel show, tell me in the chat because I, I I have my favorites. And we were talking about this. Like I, I will, I have no interest in ever being a professional Alaskan crabber and go like into the cold Alaskan waters on those boats and try to catch crab. But I watched the deadliest catch week after week after week, and I would get excited when they pulled up pull, full pots of crab, and I would feel sad when. You know, Phil died and wondering if the kids could take over the boat and handle it. And I just got so sucked into it because it wasn't about the crab. The crab fishing was the was the baseline, but it was the things that getting invested in the people around it and the stories they told the way they presented it in a way. It wasn't like, here's how you fish for crab. It was like you really got to feel like you were in there. But they didn't try to make it crazy. They didn't try to package it anything other than, you know, it was just deadliest catch. Um, and it was a scary thing, and it was a risky business, and they showed all that. So when you're making a thing about um, lawn care, like when I see that your video that was, um, you know, uh, handling 127 acres of overgrown grass on a college campus, I get a bit of that vibe, right? I get that like, oh, okay, wait a minute, you're, 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 you're really doing that thing where you, uh, where you show what you do. Um, but you also have these sort of like situations where you have to deal with, um, you know, sort of like landscaping nightmares. Uh, and I think that's the kind of thing that can really trigger people because there's their story that goes along with it. Um, so it's the fact that the story's in there, not that you have to write the word stories in your title. Um, and those are the kind of things that um, that can really compel people. Let's see. Lone Star. Lone Star Law. Can't stop watching it. Yeah, that's the kind of thing. You get sucked into it, right? Now, I'd, I don't know if you're ever, you know, if, if you're planning on being law enforcement or trying to be a, uh, you know, a bounty hunter or anything like that. But I think we get, um, we get sucked down those rabbit holes, right? Um, the history's, uh, history's mysteries, right? Like this kind of interesting stuff that you learn or you find an angle, deadliest catch for sure. That was just like really, a, for me, was one of the, um, Gold Rush, there's one, right? Now, like, Amy, I bet you, I, I know you a bit. I don't think that you plan on um, heading towards Alaska as well and then trying to um, mine for gold or pan for gold or, you know, set up a sleuth <laughs> trying, to, trying to get gold. But it's really interesting because it's built around a specific thing. I got way into, like, Mike Rose Dirty Jobs where he would just tell these stories and, and get into these things. And it was, it, was enti- it was exciting for a number of reasons. And I think that's what we're going to start seeing more of on YouTube. Even um, at, at, at VidCon, uh, VidSummit, um, Ryan Trahan was there, and he did, the, um, he did the take that penny across the, the country to bring it to Mr. Beast. And it was a whole story. You know, it was a whole thing where he kind of tried to – he had a penny, and he had to turn that penny into enough money that he could travel and he could live along the way and he could survive – so he did this series of videos, and it was really, and he, all he wanted to do was deliver the penny to Mr. Beast, but he only could start with that penny to begin with. Like he had to see if he could trade that penny for something that would be more valuable and work his way up. So there's a whole story that was really interesting to see if he could survive. And, and I mean, he got millions of views, and it was just really smart. I think it was, that's the kind of stuff that people are interested in. There's a reason to watch, there's stakes involved. Uh, so some of that stuff can be really, really important. 
Um, the evolution of music from early uh, punk was a uh, super interesting time to live through. Yeah, it sure was, Jerry. Uh, I was born in 1966, so I've, I've lived through quite a few eras of music, and they've all been very interesting. But yeah, I think it's what, what's going to happen on YouTube is we're going to, you know, we're going to see cycles. And we're going to see, I really think we're going to see more authenticity start to blossom. Uh, and people doing things that, 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 that are relatable and real and not all hyped up and not all 100 mile an hour editing. And I'm nothing against Jimmy and Mr. Beast and, and the way that they do that stuff. But I think people get played out. I think they get hammered with that stuff so much that eventually they're going to go, I, 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 don't, I don't need to hear, you know, I don't need to come at me 100 miles an hour. I kind of like, I'd like if it was just slowed down and something simpler. So I think there's going to be room for the ability to do things like a landscaping channel where you talk about these sort of like landscaping nightmares, you know, like, holy cow, I can't believe we had to deal with this. So I would say that to you, um, Elite Landscapes. Um, you know, think about that. Think about, you know, leaning on more of those things where it's really interesting situations, interesting situations in landscaping. When you talked about, would you know, hiring a, hiring a woman or, you know, that kind of thing or dealing with a crazy lawn or, you know, conversations around landscaping is kind of interesting. So I think that's a lean on those things. I'm kind of rolling through here. I'm bouncing all around. Um, let's see. Let me see. Since I started letting my audience vote on videos, uh, like, rate, positive comments have gone way up, but impressions have gone down. Do you think it's because topics are too niche? Yeah, here's one of the things you really have to watch out for. You're not letting your audience... Um, like, rate, and positive comments. Since I let them vote. Okay, so you're, are you using your community tab? Is that what's going on, Boardwalk Films? Um, you're probably use. I'm guessing that's what you mean. You're you're asking them to, to tell you what you're gonna do next. Okay, here's a big mistake that Boardwalk Films. If I can find you, uh, I'm going to community tab post. Let me do this. Hold on one second. Let me mute this. Um, yeah, it looks like right here. Let me pull this up for you, pal. What we got going on here is you've got some things where you can make them vote. I have something I'm working on. Okay, really clear. Everybody here, I want you to understand this. I do this too. I use polls to get an idea of what people think. It's not my audience that is voting. It's my community, okay? There's a big difference between your community and your target audience. Here's, here's how I try to explain it. If, if the, the people who are already subscribed and invested in you and like come to your channel, they, they like what you do. You've proven yourself to them. Um, they dig the thing that you've built so far. But channels never grow faster than when they are served to people who have no idea who we are. So asking a handful of people what you should be making for people who have no idea who you are is actually a bad idea. And what can happen a lot is like if I used to do that when I was focusing more on video editing, I would get people go, yeah, I need you to make a video teaching us how to um, you know, uh, edit gaming videos, right? Because that's, 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 that's what that one person wants or those few people want in the community. But that's not what my target audience wanted. That's what the few people I ask. It's sort of like asking your family if they if you if they think you're a good person. <laughs> you know, your family will probably go, "Yeah, we think you're great," right? Then you ask a lot of other people, they go, "Well, he's kind of a douche," <laughs> or whatever the thing is. You know, use your analytics. Let let um, let your analytics tell you the story. Make content, and if that content drives more views, like we saw with the landscaping channel when he started doing stuff like handling this 126 acres of crazy lawn. That's a lot. Um, that was stuff that triggered his target audience. So whether he had asked his community that and they had agreed it wouldn't have made a difference. The numbers from putting a video out that actually connects, that's your target audience answering the question. So talking to your community can be interesting. I think it's a good way to gauge things. I did it today before this or yesterday just to get an idea of what my immediate community felt they were struggling with the most. But I knew I was going to be on here today talking to my immediate, immediate community. This is a live stream. So I like doing it for people I know who are most engaged. I want to make sure I help people that um, are struggling with certain things. But when you're thinking about your, your target audience, that's different than your community. Community, people who have subscribed and come every day, who are part of your target audience, but the decision-making thing, the that's your community. The real target audience is all those people that don't know you. And typically, a, you know, a strong channel is going to get 70 to 80% of their views coming from um, unsubscribed people. So make sure you're focusing on their needs, not the people who are the loudest who might just be there in your community tab. Uh, Blaine Locklear says, I just turned on your live stream without seeing it. My wife heard you speaking and said, is that Daniel? <laughs> your voice is legendary. How you doing, Blaine? Thanks for the super chat, my friend. Good to see you. I hope all is going well. 
I don't know if my voice is legendary. It sure, it's certainly distinct, my weird New England accent. Um, could, you hear, could you hear my hair rustling from back there? Playing? Do I, have to, I hear the sound of hair hitting a microphone. That must be Daniel. <laughs> my Aussie uh, kitchen, uh, Gardening Kitchen became a YouTube uh, member. Hey, my Aussie Gardening Kitchen, thank you for joining the battalion. That's my favorite group. If you go over to my membership tab, you'll see that uh, if you click on the available perks under that membership tab, there's a link to get into my uh, YouTube uh, members only group on Facebook. Uh, definitely join that. Just go there and put your channel URL in it and it lines it up and it makes sure that it lets you in if you've put your, basically tell me the channel, that your channel that you're uh, connected through. Uh, it also has a bunch of members only content there that really helps you optimize your channel, all kinds of stuff. Oh, but the group is great too. Facebook group every day we sit there and we, we talk strategy. That's where the we do our mastermind sessions. And we do our members only live streams which are like super deep where I really can pull up channels and go really, really deep. Uh, thanks for joining. Glad to have you with us. Let me look at some of the stuff I got going on here. Um, uh, from Qu Crafting with Indy, I love this name, Indy Annie Jones. Question, should I go back and change the thumbnail of a more recent videos to make them all uniform as part of my branding? No. No. A matter of fact, it's funny. I used to argue with some of the other guys in the space. I don't care if, my, if your thumbnails are uniform. What I care is, are they effective? So what you should only be doing with thumbnails is to make sure they're effective. And I think what happens, Annie, is when we build enough thumbnails, we develop our own branding style. You don't have to have like a branding element. Um, I think that I know a Peter McKinnon um, thumbnail when I see one, even if it doesn't say Peter McKinnon on it, he's usually in it. Um, there's something going on. I think I know um, a Nick Nimmin thumbnail because his face is usually in it, so his face is his branding. Um, but I know there's a lot of different people. Casey Nice. I know channels I follow, I know that channel, not because it has big branding watermarks or they're all identical. I think we have our own style. I think as we build thumbnails over time, we develop a style. And I don't want anyone to get locked into that because styles change. You should try different things. Your thumbnail style should um, progress and change and modify because what was working yesterday may not be working tomorrow. So what I would tell you is, is it good to have thumbnails that seem consistent, you know, that you kind of feel like that's the vibe you're going for? Absolutely. Should you make them too consistent? No. You're trying to win the click. So what we don't want is we don't want well-branded thumbnails. We want thumbnails that people are clicking. So I would be trying to develop that, Annie. I would sit there and go, what's going to really win the click? Start playing around. Like with me, I'm constantly sometimes putting my face in, taking my face out, trying different fonts. I'm always playing around with, with what works. And are they super consistent? No. No, I'm, I'm still, you know, because I've pivoted. When I was... When I was really making a lot of Filmora stuff, I, I kind of locked in on a thumbnail style that was working really well, and I stayed with that for probably you know the better part of a year. So they all kind of had a very similar feel to them. It was a very specific font, and they had the Filmora logo down on the left, and I was using different imagery. But I think it's more important, Annie, just to um, um, nail... Let me pull up your channel. To, to really nail something that people click and they want to watch. So if you can get the packaging right, that's the most important thing. Let me pull up your channel really quickly here, pal. Um, one thing I would tell you, Annie, I think yours are too busy. Okay, I think you're, you're, there's too much going on. See all that way too much, font, you know, I can't even read half of this. It's drawing my eyes all over the place. Do you need that in Indiana, um, Indiana Jones? No, you don't need all that stuff. Look, it says... Anytime your videos are served in um, on YouTube anywhere, <clears throat> let me show you this. Come on, slow YouTube. Hey, look, I'm live. Um, when people find your videos, guess what happens? It has your name right underneath it, StreamYard. Uh, Daniel Batal, right? Uh, Brian G. Johnson TV. So it has your channel name right under it. You don't need to put, the, I don't think you need to put it in the thumbnail. I think it's, um, I think it's wasted space. What I'd probably tell you is get rid of all these layers. It's very hard for me. See how many layers you have going on here? Then the text over at the top. You, you're stuffing too much in those things. Simplify. Simplify these down. What I would tell you is try to get them simpler, easier to read, Annie, um, and, and uh, more to the point. So someone at a glance, all of these crazy fonts that are not sans serif like that one, really, really, really hard to read these fonts. That one's a little bit easier, but still crazy, crazy fonts. Way too much text. Simplify this one very hard to read. This looks like you're trying to create some kind of a you know magazine cover feel. It's got a, tons of layers. 
Um, let me see if I'm going to do a, a Halloween. Let me see if I can find a better one. Halloween decor. Let's try. Let me see what comes up. Halloween decor. I want to see if I can find some thumbnails um, that are a little bit, a little bit easier on the eyeballs. Um, here's one from a month ago, right? This person pointing at the Spirit Halloween 2022 halls. They bunch of bunch bought a bunch of stuff from there. Um, yeah, this it's just so much stuff. A lot of people making the same mistake. Um, I think simpler thumbnails are better. Um, here's one with 1.1 million views, right? The DIY fire effect, and it's super simple to understand that in the thumbnail. That's oh, a fire effect. It's the same channel, Wicked Makers. They're making stuff. Just think about how to do this. Um, I'm now I'm getting a ton of Wicked Makers. They've got a very consistent style to theirs in these three thumbnails. Simple. They do use some text, but I can read it. Um, real, real straightforward. Think about that kind of stuff, Annie, while you're building your, your thumbnails, because I think what happens is, is yours are just, um, they're just, they're just too much going on. And everybody, when you make your thumbnails, try not to layer so much stuff in here that it's just really hard to read all this stuff. Even if other people are doing it, don't use that as the, sometimes I run into channels. I'm like, wow, everyone in this niche is using, is got way too much going on. Simplified thumbnails are better. A great person that I, and I know everyone hates when I compare him, you know, go, oh, not him again. But a guy who does it well is Mr. Beast. I think that he just is really smart with his thumbnails because they're simple, right? They're just like survived 100 days in a circle, survive 100 days in a circle, win f half a million dollars. And here he is in the circle, all tattered. It says day 97. Simple, really simple, just simple stuff, right? Look at how... I survived, like simple titling, I survived a plane crash. And there he is, tattered in a raft in the ocean with the plane down on fire. Just simple, it's like really easy to understand at a glance, right, what his, what his thumbnails are, are, are supposed to represent. I opened a restaurant that pays you, uh, pays you to eat at it, and it's like right here, it's him in front of this fake restaurant, free food, eat here, get $10,000, right? Just smart, simple Make it very easy for the viewer to understand at a glance. You don't have to be hyper-focused and do crazy faces all the time and stuff. But just something that so when someone sees it, they go, I know exactly what this is. And they don't have to decipher it. That's the trick. Don't make them decipher it. Make them go, oh, I saw it and I know exactly what it is. Um, AJ Nguyen, uh, thanks for the super chat, my friend. Hey, Daniel, just wondering how long should the hook at the beginning of a video, uh, oop, yeah, should be. This is what I would tell you. Um, I think the hook... Then by hook we mean actual hook, um, not intro. I think that a hook should be just long enough to let people know what's happening. So let's say um, you were the crafting channel we just saw, and she said, um, "Today I'm going to show you how to make a couple of cool uh, craft projects for uh, Halloween this year." Let's start. Uh, let's start with this one. Just get right into it. I think a hook should just be long enough to let people know what's going on, what's happening. And get them in. You got to remember that that beginning of most of our videos usually is that huge hockey stick, uh, and you're trying to minimize that as much as possible. So that's what you should be using as a reference to figure out if your hook is too long um, or just right. Is if you're losing a lot of people right at the beginning, if you're 30 seconds into your video and you've lost half of the audience, there's a problem, right? There's a problem that you really want to be holding, you know depending on the content, but you know, if 30 seconds in, you want to be holding more than 70% of the people um, that are you know, try to keep them watching. That's kind of one of the general goals you want to aim for. So hook, short, quick, everything right to the point. Don't waste time with stuff like, hey, welcome back to the channel. Hit the like, smash the subscribe. Don't do any of that. Just get right to the thing. If like, if I, this is a live stream, but if today we were talking about if people had problems with their YouTube channel and want to fix it, that would be my hook. I would just say like, hey, if you're a content creator trying to make content, put it onto YouTube and you've had trouble struggling with trying to get people to actually connect with and watch content, there's a couple things you can do to fix it. Let me talk about that right now. Boom. So I've start the video just by letting people know that they're at the right place. They know what they're about to get. And I get right into it really quickly. So I think that's the kind of thing you want to think about with your content. But it depends what kind of channel you are. You didn't say specifically. Not a long time, though. And use your, uh, use your analytics to figure out um, what, what works. Uh, here's one from Living in Omaha from David Matney. Thanks for the super chat, pal. Uh, Daniel, what was your biggest takeaway you got from VidSummit? Or is there any new strategy you're going to implement? 
it, it, this is a funny thing. I think people always are thinking there's some great new, oh my God, I learned so much from VidSummit, like that's going to make my channel blow up. Um, VidSummit is more for me is about networking and talking to other people about how they're, how they're creating and what's worked for them and, and marketing tricks. And my, my end is a lot more to the YouTube channel because most of the stuff I do on YouTube now is business related. So for me personally, it's not so much channel related. I did the channel thing. I've showed that you can get a silver play button in a couple of years. I show that you can drive 5,000 subscribers a week and a quarter million views a week. I've done all that on my channel. So my channel now is much more focused on trying to help other creators. Uh, and then the thing I go to you to uh, vid summit for is one to present, <laughs> help other creators. We were presenting there. Um, but the things I take away from there is I get to sit like, um, I, I loved, like I went into one of the cool ones was, um, I went into DJ Kaufman's, uh, he had a great presentation with Roberto Blake and they talked about, um, five mistakes or mistakes that, um, m that marketers are making with merch and ways to improve how to do merch effectively. So with me, that was one of the things I was very interested in is how other people are using merch and, and, inter uh, interjecting it into their uh, revenue strategy. So for me, that was the kind of stuff I'm always looking at new ways to drive more revenue because, um, you know, my channel doesn't make a lot of money. Never really has, even when, even at its best. I mean, I think I, I think my best year with this channel was maybe twenty five thousand dollars in AdSense. Just the niche I'm in doesn't doesn't do well. Uh, so I've been working on really refocusing that um, and trying to get it to drive a little a little more revenue. Um, but I always have to. It's all the other things I do that really pay the bills. So you, the AdSense stuff is just petty. I don't want to call it petty cash. Twenty five thousand dollars is still money, but it's not the stuff that's gonna like. It's still like pretty cheap living. If, you, if I had to live off twenty five thousand dollars a year, I'd be in big trouble. So um, for me, Vid Summit is really about meeting with people, networking, new opportunities. Um, you know, while I was there, I have a lot of companies that see me, they talk to me, they come up to me, they tell me that you know we talk about um, how we can work together. So that's usually what the thing is for me. Uh, but in terms of um, Presentations, yeah, definitely the merch one was great. Um, I watched Nick Nimmin, uh, his presentation was great. Uh, he did a thing that I had done recently on a private SME presentation, which was really learning how to use your analytics in grouping, um, which I'm a big fan of. Um, so I just like watching what Nick's take on it was, which is when you take your videos and put them into groups in your analytics and start comparing those groups so that you can really start diving into your analytics more than just a big pile of videos that you're looking at. You can say, I want to know how very specific videos are performing and grouping. Um, you guys don't know how to do grouping on your channel, on, in your analytics? It's one of those things that I love doing. Take all your You can take all your videos that have faces in them and all your ones that don't have faces, put them into two separate groups and compare them. Check out, check out the amount of impressions and uh, the CTR of them. Start figuring out which thumbnail style works better based on um, large swaths of your content, which is kind of cool. Um, you can also compare things like certain ones that are driving, you know, specific goals for revenue. Start putting them onto your channel, make groups, and go. Well, these ones I made, and I had a spe you know, a specific um, goal of pushing them from my end screen to my my web page, and uh, let's see how many people were this, how many people were clicking that end screen element versus when I tried it on a different type of content. You can do comparisons, see which ones are performing better. Just helps you really dial in very focused um, content approach. I've been really getting into being very focused about the content, not about driving a lot of subscribers and views, but making sure the stuff I'm making is reaching the people I want it to reach and that the conversion for the metrics I care about uh, is more important. So that's the main thing I worked on and I've been uh, getting, I got excited about. Let's see, uh, crap, oh, another one. Should I go back and uh, make them all? Um, no, I already got this one. <laughs> I think I answered that. I think I really answered that. Uh, I watch more stuff, John says. I watch more stuff about things I have no interest in doing. Pretty much 90%. Uh, good, well put together, interesting stuff. Gets me gold rush, deadliest catch, dirty jobs. Yeah, I'm the same way, John. I'm like, I think that's what it is. Like, stuff that feels like you're getting to know people. Stuff that speaks to you in a way that's, um, that's interesting. The stuff that's compelling. You know, I, I think compelling is a big part of it. Curiosity is a big part of it. Stuff that I would never do. I'm the exact same way. I would never do that stuff, but I certainly watch it, boy. I'm like, man, I am down the rabbit hole. Um, it's one of those things I can't get away from. Uh, Tamara Simons, Simmons, Simons, Simons, RE Agents Mentor. Channel name feedback, please, current. Yeah, uh, let's see. If the two is Tamara Simons, RE Mentor, or Tamara Simons, your new agent mentor. Trying to dial it in for my audience. Um, 
let's see. Tamara Simons, your new agent. That's a, that's a big one. That's a long one. I think you have to remember when you've got a really um, uh, – I, I would probably uh, – I would pick one or the other. I'm going to be – let me let me suggest this, Tamara. You're trying to put it all in a business card, right? You're trying to like – I want a business card that says everything I do. And then also – or like, you know, like you ever see like the on your the office desk when it says the, the person's official title or on their door, they you know, they letter it onto the door. You, if you have one that's 40 miles long and it's falling off the desk, it, it seems a little ridiculous at that point. So what I'd probably tell you is do one of two things. Choose either Tamara Simons and say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brand my name or go a different way and say, um, your real estate mentor or something like that, right? And then I would do like, you know, your real estate mentor as the channel name. Don't try to do all of it. Tamara Simons, your real estate men- uh, agent mentor, it's just so much. So I, I would try to simplify, either go, either decide down the line, do you want people to know you for your name? Or do you want people to know you as a branded thing? It's, I, I always make that comparison like uh, if you were in a band, right? If you were a musician, do you want to be, um, you know, do you want to get out there and say, I want people to know me as, you know, John Mayer, or, you know, uh, or do I want people to know me as, you know, the Beatles or whatever that, you know, pick your favorite band name, Led Zeppelin, Leonard Skinner. That's not a, that was a guy's name, but no one in the band was named that. It was the janitor. Um, so think about the branding. Either go for a branding play or go with your name and then let your name become the branding. Sometimes squishing it all together, I think, is just you're trying to do too much. You're thinking too much like a businesswoman. You're not thinking like a YouTube content creator. And on YouTube, we want it short to the point, succinct, and get it done. And if you're going to go with your name, just go with your name and then make sure that the channel screams the whole thing about teaching uh, real estate agents to uh, – you know, teaching people to come, become successful real estate agents. Uh, that's where I would go. Though. One of the two. I think the two options you give me are both still too much. I have to understand RE, which is hard, and then your new agent. It's just a lot. Simplify one or the other, your name or the brand. Um, let's see. Hey, Dan. Uh, this is the Little Mouse Production. Thank you for the super chat, pal. Uh, hey, Daniel. I'm in the kid space. Tough one. Engagement is extremely tough. Absolutely. Any advice on how to grow a channel to the next level and on what should I focus um, very tricky to kid space. It's been, I, when people who have come to the channel and said to me, I'm thinking about starting a kid's channel. I've been telling them don't because <laughs> it's so hard right now. It's been so hard for people. Um, but if you're going to do it, let me see if I can find that again. Um, if you're going to try to do a kid's channel, which I think is, uh, by the way, that was, uh, I have to say, thank you. Thank you, Annie. Thank you for the super chat. You're very welcome. I hope that was helpful on the thumbnails. Um, play around with those, Annie. Play around with those thumbnails and try to go simple, 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 simple. Uh, when it comes to, uh, this was the question, the Little Mouse production. Let me pull up the channel. Let's take a look. Let's see what it looks like. Um, you, because because kids' content still with the with the F, um, with the FCC and COPPA and all that, it's like, man, the, you guys don't get to have any comments. You don't get any end screens. You don't. It's just tricky. I, one of the things I'm going to tell you you want to watch out for is... Um, content farming. Make sure that your content isn't identical, simple, animated stuff that all looks very similar because that can get you in trouble. Make sure that the stuff you're doing is unique. So if you want to get in, uh, you said engagement is what really your focus. Let me just pull this up here really quickly. Um, Like I think the thumbnails are pretty darn cool. I think that really feels like a show. Little Mouse, Good Morning Train, Little Mouse, um, Happy Birthday Song, the coloring song. Um, Engagement is tough. Uh, Little Mouse, the music mix thing here from seven months ago seemed to do well. Let me see what's been doing well, period. Um, Most popular. Um, This one from 11 months ago. So songs, they seem to like the songs, the Little Mouse wheels on the bus song so you do a lot of song stuff that seems to have done well in the past um one of the things i would tell you if you want more engagement do a better job of linking some of these things together um if you're you've got most recent uploads popular uploads um make sure that you're linking where you can where you can link these things together um which means you can't use unfortunately you can't do stuff like cards i don't believe they let you do end screens because you can't recommend it can you right i don't think so i don't think they let you do those anymore 
and you can't do comments, which is a pain in the butt. But what you can do when you build your playlists, do this. Make sure you build your playlists, put them in a row. And when you're building your playlist, let me show you something. Inside of your, let me pull your comments out of here. Everybody pay attention to this. When you are in your playlists, when you build a playlist, all right, so you go to your YouTube studio. Let me get my face out of here so you guys can just see this. When you go to YouTube studio, um, let me get rid of this stuff. Hang on out of here. Pick your playlist. Uh, let me go here. When you edit your playlist, you click on the pencil. Um, and you will see this is where you would create a title for your playlist. Make sure you're using really well-optimized titles. This is where you would put in a description for your playlist. Make sure you use really well-optimized descriptions. But then if you look right here above this, you see these three linear dots? That's called the ellipsis right here. Click on that and then click on Playlist Settings. And there is a section here that starts off, but you want to make sure it's on, and that is set as the affiliate. Whoops, I just clicked it off. Let me get that back on one second. Of course, doesn't like it when I use that tool. Um, set as playlist settings. Set as the official series for this playlist. Now, if you do this, what it does is it gives YouTube the nod that these videos should be all considered played together like whatever order it's in it sort of gives youtube the hint that hey if they're watching one make sure you go on to the next one that's on screen that creates a series playlist now by definition on youtube you cannot have more than one um series playlist that have that has the same videos in it this is tricky let me see if i can explain this properly you can have any number of playlists uh, there is a final limit i think but they but pretty much unlimited in those playlists, you can have playlists that have the same videos in it, like the, not exactly the same that wouldn't make sense. But maybe one video you go, oh, I have it in that playlist, but I have a different playlist that it also fits into. Only one of them can be a series playlist. If you tried to make them both series playlists, it would throw up a little warning that says, this can't be a series playlist because you already have some of these videos and another one that you told us was the series. And once you tell YouTube these belong together in this order, by clicking series, it won't let you use those videos in another series playlist, even though you can put it in another regular playlist that isn't marked series. But if you're looking to get a little more engagement, like Kids Channel, that's a great way to do it, is make sure that you're making really strong playlists so if they start watching and they're labeled as series, they can help YouTube understand that those belong together and hopefully improve that experience. And when people come to your homepage, that's another big thing too. When they come to your homepage and they're watching your videos, make sure that the homepage is really well optimized. And remember who you're, um, you're making content for, right? Right here, the Little Mouse production, right? I like, I love everything you got going on. I mean, the graphics look really great. It's very cool. It's nice and simple. Um, you do have a lot of this stuff pushing people off platform. You're like, welcome to my channel. Now go to Instagram. Now go to Facebook. Here's a website and here's Twitter. Maybe, yeah, maybe if that's working, I don't know. I think I would save that for in the descriptions of your videos. And remember that it's probably more often than not parents that are, um, that are putting these things on just based on the age range. So think about this, uh, the little mouse recent up, whoop, let me get this circle here. The little mouse recent uploads doesn't help. And if a parents are the target, that doesn't help them figure out anything, right? That's your own branding play. What, what, a, what it would have been better to make a playlist that was more like, and in pop, popular uploads does nothing. 11 minute music miss, mix playlist for little mouse fans. Now you're assuming they're already fans, right? Which is great. I like the branding ideas, but you'd be, you know, it would be much better off if you started making playlists that were like um um so, song, songs your kids can songs kids can learn the alphabet to songs kids can learn uh, songs to help lear, kids learn to read better uh, songs that'll help kids learn how to count right things that a parent can get invested in and go oh this is cool and it's a whole playlist put together they can click it they can let it run um, you know kid friendly kid fr you know a, a kid safe songs that even adults love or something like that think about the target audience of who's actually hitting the play button. I don't think little three-year and four-year-olds or, or two-year-olds or three-year-olds are coming and opening up YouTube. I think their parents may be doing it more often. So target the parents and trigger them and make playlists that work and try to get them down the rabbit hole of why they'd want to watch your content and make your homepage 
uh, your storefront really speak to them because uh, this op- popular uploads and using your name a lot doesn't off the bat off the bat speak to me about why I would want to watch. I have to get down into the video titles before I start learning more about. Oh, okay, this one helps you. This one's songs. This one's counting. Be, be, start being more intentional and compelling with the with the way you're building them together because you can't use a lot of the features for engagement. So the engagement, get them watching, keep them watching. That's the goal. Uh, let me see. Success with Sunita. Thank you very much for the um, uh, the super chat. Hold on a second. Uh, Sunita, I, th- I appreciate that, Sunita. And thanks for uh, let me look at your channel. Uh, in the private chat, we had a couple of super chats in here. Um, um, Oh, the questions. Oh, this is Sunita's. Okay, success with Sunita asked. A lot of people use their full names as their channel name. I might do that, but it doesn't explain anything. It doesn't have to. Um, Sunita, the, the reason, let me make sure I explain this to everybody. The reason people use their name is it's a branding play. Um, that's what I did. I used my, my, um, my name as a branding play. What you have to understand is what does success with Sunita mean? If that was yours was an astrology channel, I would not have guessed in a million years that success with Sunita helped me understand st- astrology. I would have said, oh, maybe she's going to give me tips for becoming uh, a successful business person. And I know there's some of the stuff you do talk about business or maybe it's, you know, I don't know what weight loss success. So uh, what I would tell you, Sunita, is just if you're going to brand your name, brand your name. Uh, the same way we did, I made that example before. It doesn't have to, if you're going to brand your name, it doesn't have to explain anything to the viewer because the goal with a name, branding your name, is you want to make content and everything else on your channel so clear that the content screams the value prop, the channel art screams the value prop, playlist scream the value prop. Like if you go to my channel, let me give you an example here. If you were to go to my channel, and I just use Daniel Batal, and if someone said, well, that doesn't tell me what the channel's about, but you have to understand what I'm, what the game I'm playing here is, I want people to... I want people to know me as Daniel Batal. That's my play. Uh, the goal has been the whole time to make sure that as I build this, people start to learn and identify na- my name with the thing I do. Now, if you look at my channel art, it's me up there. There's my face. I don't need to put my name up there again. It's in my channel. Uh, and I teach people how to make better video content, put it up onto YouTube and grow channel, grow an audience around it on YouTube. So I try to do it, you know, better videos grow channels faster. Video, video editing tips and YouTube, YouTube growth strategies. I try to keep it simple. I try to make it effective. You know, I, you know, even the way I made the font kind of grow a little bit bigger. Just I'm always playing with it and trying to do it better. And then when I go down, you know, the playlist titles are, you know, make videos that actually work on YouTube. Descriptions. I'll show you how to, how some of my favorite video content, editing, my favorite uh, video editing content trip tips and tricks, make YouTube videos, audio and images really pop up. But you know how to get more views and subscribers on YouTube. Trying to grow your channel faster. Let me show. You. It's all that stuff that talks about it, right? Editing and growing the channel and putting videos on YouTube. So out of context, my name is Daniel Batal, and that's what I want to be known as. And hopefully, all the other content speaks for itself. So when I walk into a, you know. Um, a place like Vid Summit, and someone will, you know, say, "Hey, I know you're Daniel Batal. I've watched your channel." As opposed to, I walk into a room and they go, "Oh, you're that guy from the name of the channel." So you just have to decide which branding play you want. Do you want to be known as as a as the human? Think down the line. If you were successful, you know, as successful. If you were successful, that sounds terrible. Uh, down the line, if you hit all your success goals, what what do you want to be known as? Do you want to be able to people to look at you and know you by your name? Then brand your name. If you want to be known as a pro, like a, a product name, a brand name, then do that. Call yourself, you know, if you're Burger King or McDonald's or you know whatever that thing is, uh, International House of Pancakes. You know, do whatever it is that screams your value prop as a brand name. But that's usually one of the two. Not one of the two. It's like a brand name or your own name. So your own name doesn't have to tell anything. Doesn't have to scream to the. Um, anything to the target audience but if you're going to use a brand name then make sure that does because why would you if you're going to make up a a, a made-up brand name then you should probably do something to make sure it sells the value prop uh retro af hey i love that name retro af hey daniel i'm a small content creator only doing it six months hey uh congrats for uh coming to youtube and uh and and giving it a shot because that's uh that's what we're here for man um, is there any high level advice you give me? I give you all kinds of high level advice. You just wouldn't understand it, right? Um, you know, pay attention to the amount of unique viewers you have coming to your channel, how many average views per viewer they're doing, compare that over a large swath of videos and make sure you're using your analytics to justify, um, the decisions you make on your channel. Is that high level enough? 
<laughs> um, don't look for simple tricks to suddenly make things work. That's what I'm going to tell you. My high level advice is don't go high level. This is the this is what we do. What makes channels grow? YouTube is a platform of prediction. That means at any given moment, YouTube is trying to. Um, get a viewer watching and keep them watching by serving them content that they think is the right uh, kind of content for that viewer's interests, period. That's true with search, that's true with browse, that's true with suggested. So when you make content, you need to be as clear and simple as possible to get that viewer intrigued to click and watch. Now, once they're inside of your video, you need to edit videos and structure them in a way that actually get them to keep watching. Don't waste the viewer's time. Get to the thing, hit them with the value. Whatever that thing is you do, don't mess around. Just get right into it, right? You know, it's funny, even like movies nowadays, the, they used to start movies off with all the big intro and you know the starring so-and-so and all that stuff. You go to movies nowadays, a lot of times they don't even start the opening credits. They get right into the action. They'll start the movie right with the action. Even though people are already paid and they're there, it's like a whole experience where, you know, hit them with the action first and then maybe they'll do some opening credits like, um, you know, a couple minutes in. I really want you to think about connecting with people. Understand who your target audience is, retro AF, what the interest is, why they would watch your content, and then make sure that you're learning more about those people every single day. Don't make content just that you think is interesting, which you can. I mean, I, I think the content I make is interesting, but I make very specific content for very specific people based on what, I, what uh, my data has shown me are the things that are pain points for them, that are problematic for them. Um, and I do that as often as possible and as effectively as I can as possible. And I'm always looking at my data to figure out, did that work? Should it have been shorter? Should it have been longer? Did I go too fast? Um, were, did, were people very responsive to it? Did I get a lot of comments and engagement with um, a video that I put up there? Did this really seem to get them excited about the conversation? So if I can do that, then I'm happy. So same with you. Fig figure out what works. Um, high level tips. You know, it's low level. You know, keep it simple. Titles shouldn't. Don't you know? Try not to make crazy titles. Optimize for the viewer. Try to make things that you think they'd um, they'd enjoy. I can pull up your channel really quickly if you want. Why not? We're talking about you right now. Let me see if I can find you. Retro AF. Man, he is retro AF. I know what that means. I won't say it. I don't want to get demonetized. I don't know if I, I think I'm allowed to swear without any problem. I just, I swear enough in my real life. I don't need to do it here. Um, here's your channel, right? Uh, one of the things I tell you right off the bat is let's get your value prop up here, pal. I know you're new, but one of the things is you just got your whole name up here. You're not a restaurant. You know, you're not McDonald's. We don't know who you are. And I saw that it says retro AF down here. So I don't need you to tell me again with huge letters up here. You could do that much smaller. Then tell me what this is about. What does it mean? Are you... I'm looking, building a brand new Sega game, get, fix it, some random, converting VHS, let's repair our subscribers. It looks like it's a lot of gaming stuff. Is it retro gaming, Sega? I'm seeing a lot of, I'm seeing a lot of gaming stuff, so I'm going to say it's retro gaming. It doesn't say retro gaming, though, so what I would tell you is um, get something up there, show some of the imagery of the retro games. I like some of these thumbnails. Um, I don't even think, this, this one right here is a killer thumbnail. You don't need this text, though. I think the text is hurting, and I think I would have probably held those two things closer to the camera because you have a lot of negative space all over. This is negative. You A lot of open real estate on either side, and you don't need the text. But the picture is great. I, I'm loving this. I'm loving that picture right there, man. Like, I think that's a great image of the... the it says... Uh, Let's fix game. Let's fix a Game Gear and give it a, and give it to someone random. Oh, and I like this. Really smart. Not only did you fix something, you gave it away. So now, why would I watch that video? This is exactly. Hey, gamers out there, pay attention. He's not even. This isn't specifically a gaming channel. He's more game consoles and handhelds and stuff. And I think it's mostly the handheld he seems to be doing here. So these, you know, these portable game, you know, Game Boys and things like that. Um, He's building them, and then he, he adds another layer. Let's uh, let's fix it and give it to someone random. I'm like, yeah, heck yeah, I'd watch that just because I want to see the reaction. So smart, smart, smart. Um, I would probably bring that. Um, think about bringing some of that into this packaging here. It's an interesting thumbnail, but I didn't get the giving it to someone random isn't represented in there, right? It's not represented in the thumbnail. So if you're going to fix it and give it to someone random, I think the fixing part of it is cool, but the giving it to someone randomly is, is, is even cooler. So if that was a good experience, I would have leveraged that part of the story more and probably put it into the thumbnail. Um, 
I, if you have ever, I always come back to Mr. Beast because he does so many things well. He was giving people a credit card and letting them spend. He just handed them the credit card and said, here you go, 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 go crazy. Um, so let's go. Uh, Mr. Beast gives, uh, gives credit card. Let me see. What was the one? Here it is. Here we go. See this? Look at that thumbnail. I gave my credit card to random people. There's the credit card, his hand. Look at the excited person, right? He did another one here, too. This was a year ago. I gave a million, I gave a, people a million dollars, but only one minute to spend it. The same kind of thing, right? But this like idea of handing it to someone who's really excited, I would be like, wow, I wish you had done something like that, like a really excited person, and you're handing them the, the, the gaming console. So consider how to do things that are super compelling. I, uh, I mean, I love that you're brand new when you're getting in there. A lot of great images. Um, um, be careful on the... Is it all things retro because you're rec you're here you're converting VHS recordings to 4K? Is someone who's interested in that would they also be interested in building Sega gear? I don't know. I th I, I don't think that that's bad to move around like that. Just be careful. Um, that got some views. That I mean I'm not going to argue if it got views it did well. Let's repair a random subscriber's Sega Nomad. Yeah, cool stuff, man. I'm digging it. I I would just get rid of all this little text that you have on here I, that's actually i think hurting the image i think i would just go with the um just the image get a great shot of the image and lose all those little text blurbs they look a little funky um that would be my advice yeah just kind of stick with the compelling stuff i think um i think you're off to a good start though look at this man you got like you know what have we got here about five one of five maybe 20 videos up and you're already hitting if if these are organic views you're already hitting 1900 views in two weeks dude that's great 2100 views in three weeks on that short um the shorts are doing pretty well for you it's long forms doing pretty well for you 1400 views in four weeks stay on it brother there's already some good stuff happening i like the i know your branding now that blue in the background is kind of cool i like it when you don't leave a lot of the real estate um i think some of these ones where there's just a little bit of that blue showing is kind of cool but I think you're off to a great start, man. I would totally um, just try to get the get the homepage um, experience better. You can do more at the channel art. You've only got uploads. Let's start getting these into playlists. You know, let's get some featured content on your channel. You can everybody. You can put featured content. If I went to my channel, you would see. Let me start stop scribbling everywhere on my channel. Um, there's here's some big featured content right now. It's showing me the live stream because I'm live. I've got it set to do that. But if this was my channel normally, you have two different types of featured content you could put there. Uh, one for the new visitor. They call it a trailer, but I hate the word trailer. I, I don't make a trailer. Just make take a strong piece of content. Um, and think about if you're going to put featured content there, why would a viewer... Why would they be on your homepage? They didn't randomly come across you. They probably watched a video and they came to check out your channel. So think about putting a really great video there, preferably something like that has a high conversion metric, something from the last 90 days. You go, this one's been doing well. A lot of people have been, I, my metrics show me that a lot of people subscribe um, when they watch this. So if you know you're putting something there for someone who's not subscribed, new viewer, um, put something that has high conversion. And then there's a different experience you can put. There's two options. Um, I think you guys, you guys all know how to do this, right? I think, yes, I'm going to say maybe, hold on. If you go into your, if you're on your channel, right? You're right here. Um, you see right on the channel, it says um, customize channel. If you click on that customize channel, it'll open up your customization tab. And here's the two options, right? It's channel trailer for people who haven't subscribed. Just forget that that says trailer. Just may, pretend it says featured video for people who haven't subscri subscribed. And then featured video for returning subscribers. So for the returning subscribers, like why would someone who was subscribed to your channel come back? Yeah, probably something like they they missed a notification, hadn't heard from you in a while, and they're like, does Daniel have any new videos up? So put your newest video there. So just think about that. I would be using uh, Retro AF. I'd be putting featured content. It's all about experience. Experience can, lev can um, really be powerful. So try to give your viewers the best experience when they visit not only your video, but your channel itself and the homepage and lay that thing out really well. Uh, where am I at? Hey, Daniel, uh, this is a 59 Wanders MYR 50. I don't know what the MY value is, but thank you for the 15 MYRs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyone help, please? Megan? Megan, what's, a, what's an MYR? I can hear you typing. 
Malaysian ringgit. Ring ringgit? Sweet. Thank you for all the ringgits. <laughs> um, hey, Daniel, I've not received my PIN for AdSense account since I'm eligible for YPP despite sending multiple PIN requests. Ads stopped running now. Um, good question. Um, and you reached out to... Um, let's see, you haven't received your PIN for AdSense account and you're eligible for YPP. So you're having trouble signing up for AdSense? Um, go to the easiest way to start getting some help for that. Twitter has, uh, uh, YouTube on Twitter has a pretty good resource. Um, it's the, if you go to Twitter, their, their YouTube, um, the YouTube Twitter account, let me see if I can speak here, is actually pretty good. Uh, so you want to go not just the YouTube, it's the YouTube, what do they call it? YouTube creators. Let me just pull this up so you can see it. If you go to, um, to Twitter, and they're, they're really responsive. You can ask um, you can ask questions, but it's this one here. If you can see the drop down, not YouTube, but YouTube creators. Go to Twitter and go to YouTube creators, um, and there you can like tag them and go, "Hey, I have a question." And they're usually pretty good about answering. Um, the YouTube creators is pretty awesome. Uh, so I would definitely try going to Twitter first and asking, see if you can get some answers. They'll usually point you in the right direction. For AdSense, AdSense can be very tricky depending on your region, depending if you filled out the forms right, depending, you know, if you make a mistake, then, you know, I can't tell from the outside in if you've got some of the information wrong or you didn't, put, you know, if you, you didn't qualify, you maybe you didn't put the age in right or you didn't put your, you have to tie your bank account in. There's a whole bunch of qualifications because to tie in AdSense, they're sending you money. So you have to make sure all of your information is put in correctly before they allow you in. Now, I don't know what you meant by PIN. If, I don't know if you lost access to your account and you're trying to get back in, um, but basically, you know, if you have, if you're trying to, it sounds like you're trying to create an AdSense account, just uh, you know, reach out to uh, to YouTube um, on Twitter, and they're usually pretty responsive and can, they'll start DMing you or send you messages or point you in the right directions of how to make sure you got things right. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm just kind of scrolling through here, trying to catch up with not just super chats. Uh, let's see, what does this one say? Uh, I'm sure Tanya will tell you to stick with Anish. Don't post hiking vids and fix it vids on the same channel. Hey, yep, yep. You just you gave him the right advice. <laughs> I don't. I missed the question. Um, uh, that, but it sounds like that you he was doing hiking vids and fix it vids on the same channel. I can tell you from experience here that that even as as much as I was trying to help creators make uh, make better videos, put it onto YouTube and grow a YouTube channel. I spent so much time teaching them how to do make better videos using one specific software, Filmora, that it actually hurt my channel overall because the minute I stopped talking about Filmora, no one cared about YouTube. So you have to be very specific about the people you're trying to reach. Um, I really had to revamp my channel and it's been going through changes now because the people I wanted to reach were people who wanted to make videos specifically to put on YouTube and grow an audience around it. And I accidentally started targeting people who just wanted to learn how to use Filmora. They had no, a lot of them had no, any, they had no interest in, in building a YouTube channel, couldn't care less. So when I started talking about YouTube, they stopped watching. And I went, oh, well, that was a mistake. So, you know, occasionally to do some of that stuff isn't bad, but try to really figure out who your target audience is if they're people who enjoy hiking then, you know, make stuff that really focuses around people who enjoy hiking. Um, if it's people who enjoy fixing things, then really target fixing things. Here's one of the things I don't think people really understand. YouTube is excellent at finding audiences for individual videos on the platform. Like, it can find the right audience for my videos, and it can find the right audience for everyone in this chat. But what it doesn't do well is find audiences for specific videos on my channel meaning I can't make a video about cooking and it would go, okay, Daniel made a cooking video, only serve this to people who are interested in cooking. Oh, oh, now he made a travel video, only serve that video on Daniel's channel to people who are interested in traveling. It is, YouTube is always trying to, with all of our channels, understand the right audience for our channel. So we need to do everything we can to help them understand who to serve that content to. So it's going to always try to serve my video tomorrow to the people who watched my last video yesterday. And if you shift and you do something like hiking and then the next one is fix it, the people who are enjoying hiking stuff, it's not that your fix it video was bad. It's just that they get, it gets served to them and they go, no, I'm not watching that. I, I'm not interested in fix it videos. I like hiking videos. And when they don't click, YouTube thinks that that video is just that people don't like it. 
and they stop serving it out. So you, it's really important that you help YouTube to define your target audience. That's one of the things I get asked a lot about. Like, I don't know how to get the algorithm to, you know, the like me or it's never algorithm. It's audience. Make sure that you're making it easy for YouTube. YouTube really wants to connect um, videos and viewers. They want to put the two together. So what you need to do is make sure you're making it easier for them to do that. Let them know exactly who the target audience you're um, your content is built for by making stuff that those people would want to watch consistently. That's how you can really start getting some momentum on your channel. Do it week after week, stuff that really connects to a very specific person, um, and then stay on it, and then just double down on it and stay on it. Uh, I do have to take a second to uh, thank all of the wonderful sponsors who uh, make it easy for me to do the thing that I do here. So let's, uh, let's say hi to uh, our sponsors. This live stream is sponsored in part by StreamYard live streaming made simple and by Spreadshop, the number one resource for all of your print on demand needs so if you're interested in uh live streaming and doing live streams like i do here with the ability to share screens have people on do all that link down below for Streamyard. you can start trying it for free try all their pro level uh options for 30 days and live stream up to 20 hours um a month which is way more than i live stream uh and i like to thank Spreadshop for making all the cool this one here it is. All the cool merch that we have around here. Uh, if you're interested in making merch, selling merch, you can start doing that for free too. Link is down in the description. Thank you, Spreadshop and StreamYard. Uh, let me get back into the chat here and try to get through as many as I can here. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Oh. Let's see. Is, is Eric giving some hints here? Yeah, Eric's always help, helpful. Uh, right here. Um, with 59 Wanders. Hi, Daniel. I have a problem where I have not. Nope, that's the same one. I already did the pin. I'm getting redundant. <laughs> This is what happens when you're old. You just forget. Did I read that already? Um, let's see. I'm just trying to find catch up with some of these. I'm way behind in my. Uh, I'm way behind in my chat. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I will find some. I'm sorry. I am so far behind. I'm trying to catch back up. I see Robin is in here. Hooked by Robin. One of my favorite battalion members really helping people giving some good uh good advice in in the chat how big is your channel now have you hit a half million subscribers yet robin you got to be close robin's been crushing it um i love her channel great example of someone who's really on the ball hooked by robin 475 um uh this is i gotta show you guys just so you can see what i'm talking about with great channel Hooked by Robin, you know, done in the yarn. Look at all these great thumbnails. She does all crochet. Um, I, I can never say this word, and she mocks me every time. Amigurumi crochet. New fresh project. She found out that her um, her target audience loves new crochet projects, and so she actually made a playlist of all new stuff. Like, they really get, like, what can we do next? What can we do next? And it worked out really well. But then she's got crochet projects for absolute beginners. Love that. Like, such a great for absolute not for beginner you know absolute beginners like really compelling great great thumbnails i love her thumbnails They're, they pop and that's why she gets 2.5 million views on a on a, a video that's why she can get you know 353,000 views or 567,000 views really smart branding you know what this is it's a crochet channel from the minute you get here everything screams crochet from the channel art down to the thumbnails to the titles to the videos of uh, the playlist really smart um a great example of someone who's very niche down and doesn't sway from what she knows and what she's learned her target audience really likes she pushes the boundaries out every now and then she'll test out a couple things to see if she can move the needle a bit the needle is that a is that a crochet joke robin <laughs> but um but she's very focused and very easy for the viewer to understand why they want to watch that someone who's interested in crocheting there you go, bang, right in your face. Really, really smart, um, well done, well produced uh, channel and content. Uh, my Aussie Garden and Kitchen, Q, this is where I struggle. I do cooking and growing uh, food to cook and preserve. All of this I do videos on. Homesteading, people like this though, but is it too broad? It seems to be working okay. Let's see, so these are, I do, you do cooking and growing food to cook and preserve. So it's your Aussie Garden and Kitchen. All of this I do videos on. Homesteading people like this, though. Is that too broad? I don't think that's too broad. It's so you're, you're growing food to cook and preserve. So it's basically um, self-sustainable um, food, right? You are your own, you're your own 
all of your food you grow and grow. I'm assuming it's all grow and kill, cook. Maybe I don't know if it's uh, that too. Uh, but let me check it out, my Aussie, because it says garden and kitchen. Um, no, that doesn't sound broad to me at all. People who would be interested in learning how to um, grow and uh, sustain themselves with this uh, whatever they're whatever they're cooking. Let me just check this out real quickly, pal. Let me pull this channel up. Um, bum 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 bum. Where are you? Here we go. Um, this is funny. You actually, your that beard reminds me of uh, my pal Robert Lee. You guys are battling for best beard on um, on YouTube. Okay, uh, not too broad, but I would tell you this. Um, there's a thumbs up picture of you. There is some kind of leafs, greens are in the background. Um, but cooking, gardening, how there's too much stuff going on. Chickens, worms, growing fruit, it's too much. Simplify this. Get the uh, get the my Aussie garden and kitchen up here, and then um, and then put a value prop under it that says something to the effect of uh, um, uh, learning to learning to learning to grow and cook your own meals or something like that. Learning to grow and cook your own food. Learning to grow and cook, or just just you don't have to say learning. I guess you could just do um, cooking, uh, grow and grow and cook your very own food or like grow your own, your own meals, grow and cook your own meals, your own dinners, your own, whatever. I keep spitballing that until I got it right. The thumbs up is cool, but the thumbs up does. I'd rather have you have a whole, uh, bushel of like vegetables and stuff that you are, you grew and you're holding it up, like excited, like, look what I grew. Um, so think about that. I think that's probably important. Um, you've got a little bit of growth here. That's pretty cool. I dig it when anything's going on. All my garden, again, all my gardening videos does not help me get, um, interested in watching this content. That's a, a playlist title. You should be doing, it should be more compelling than that. Because if I said all my gardening videos, I see that it says gardening, but it's how to plant. Like you should, instead of all my gardening videos doesn't help me. It should be something more like, um, you know, how to, how to grow the perfect garden. Uh, how to grow the perfect garden start to finish. And then in there is all the tips and tricks about gardening that you might have. Um, retired chef's cooking videos. Like, do I need to know you're a retired chef? That this is like, now it's throwing me off because you didn't mention the part about um, it's cooking. But if, if it's growing and cooking it, then this should be part. Um, it shouldn't say retired chef's cooking videos. It should be cooking the foods, uh, cooking, cooking the foods we grew. Um, you know, so connect it back. It's growing it and cooking it, growing it and cooking it. Um, how to grow it, how to cook it. Is it too broad? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. People who want to, because the target audience would be people who want to grow their own food and cook it. You know, like how do you grow and how do you cook? It? And if you take it, you know, like garden to table. Oh, maybe that's it. Maybe that's the vibe. Maybe that's the vibe, right? Garden to table or something like that. Um, and you want to just really t make sure that you're showing them how to grow the stuff, and then once they've grown it, how to pull it, and then how to make a meal out of it. I think that's totally one target. It's a broad audience, but I think it's cool audience. So sometimes you can just make sure you don't intentionally separate it with things like retired chefs cooking videos. Doesn't mention anything in that playlist about you growing the, the stuff yourself. So it has to say cooking the food that we grew in our garden, right? Something like that. Bring it. Always make sure that once you develop a very strong value proposition like, well, my channel is all about teaching people how to grow their own food and then cook it in their kitchen, then make sure everything meets that value proposition, okay? What's your channel about? I help people learn how to grow their own food and cook it in their own kitchen. Great, that's a great value prop, I love it. Grow your own food and cook it in your, grow your own food, cook it in your own kitchen. I love it, love it, I get it. I get, I get what it's about, who the target audience is, and what can I expect from this channel week after week. But then you have to say, okay, here I'm going to go write a playlist title. Retired Chef's Cooking Videos. Does that scream grow your own food and cook it in your own kitchen? No, it screams cooking, and it screams more about a retired chef. That's a different value prop. What it should have been is um, cooking, the, cooking the food we grew in our garden. Then it says, does that scream cook, grow your own food and cook it in your own kitchen? Now it does. So that's what I always talk about things... Um, Really working out of context, meaning when I when I when I'm not looking at it just in the channel, but when I take the individual thing out of context, does it scream the value proposition still? If it does, you've probably done a good job with it. All right. Uh, let me see. I'm just rolling through some of these. Hook by Robin. I will find these. Q Q Q Q Q. Um, uh, Robin's buys and DIYs. Q Q Q Q Q Q. 
When you fill your description box for shorts, do you fill it to the max with descriptions, et cetera, of what your video is about, or do you make it short? Well, Robin, let me ask you this question. You can have up to 5,000 characters of, te- of characters in a description. Um, do you ever stop and read all of a description if it was 5,000 characters long? Do you really stop and read descriptions? There is no... F- people get too confused, like, oh, I should do this because YouTube likes it better. It's never that. Think, forget YouTube, forget algorithm, think audience. Does your audience want you to fill the description up? Do Depends what it is, right? I suppose if it was a cooking video that actually needed to have all the ingredients and then a written description that they could copy and paste that would actually be the entire um, recipe and how to cook it, now maybe they want more in the description than someone like in mine. My description's kind of short. I kind of, you know... I usually use a description to link to another video. I do a quick description to let people know what's it, what to expect in that video. And then I'll put some links to things that are going on. Like if you look at the description under the video, this live stream we're on right now, it's pretty straightforward. A little bit of a description. I don't even think I linked out to anything for this live stream. And then I, you know, I, my sponsors, I told you, you know, if, hey, if you want to try Spreadshop or, or StreamYard, they'll both, those are both down there. And then my general disclaimers that I put in there just in case I use any you know, footage or anything from uh, any of the assets that I that I license. Um, other than that, yeah, just keep it. Think about the viewer. What's the best? What's the best experience for the viewer, Robin? Um, and for shorts, what I like to do. My strategy for shorts is I tend to use them to push back to long form content. So in my shorts description, all I really tend to do in those is mostly, um, you know, click here to see the entire video because a lot of times I'll have a one that's like I make a short and I go, hey, if you want to learn the whole process, I actually showed that. I'll link that down below and then down below I'll be like a clip here to see the full process. So just make be intentional uh, and think about the viewer would be my my advice on that. Let me see where we at here. Let me, I'm scrolling. I am scrolling. Uh, Daniel, uh, you have not been doing live. What Daniel, you have not been doing live videos. Do you? I have missed watching your live for, yeah, I have. I've been doing live videos quite a bit. Actually I do. Um, especially in the last few months I do one, I do at least twice a month. We were doing it as much as once a week. So I've been doing a lot of live videos and I live stream onto the StreamYard channel with D Nimmin, um, once a month. And, uh, I, a lot of times I'll jump in with like Roberto Blake or, or Nick Nemin too. But yeah, we've been doing a lot here. Um, that just, they probably, what happens is if you haven't been, um, last week I didn't, I was at vid summit this past week, but usually once a week, once every two weeks, I'll live stream usually on Sunday. Um, but if now that you've watched the live stream, you'll probably get the notifications that that's the thing about YouTube is they tend to notify people who have recently watched more frequently. Um, let me see. On some videos, I have 46, 4, 4, 6.0, 46, I guess that's percent, click-through rate. Average view duration of 80%, and YouTube is recommended very little. What am I doing wrong? Well, I'll tell you what you're doing wrong. You're getting your nose pressed against individual metrics. Metrics mean nothing. If you have a 46% click-through rate, I bet you the thing has three views, right? That's what probably happened. Um, it, I guarantee you do not have a 46% click-through rate with millions of impressions because what happens is YouTube puts your video out in front of people and if they watch um, and they they give a good response, they put it out in front of a few more people. And if those people seem to get a good response, YouTube starts learning um, more about your video and who's the right target audience for it. So it's not about numbers. It's not like, oh, I have a really good click-through rate because you could have had your mom watch it. You know, you could go, hey, mom, I got my video out. Hey, dad, I got my video out. And call your family and go, I need every one of you to watch this. And they click and then they watch. And then the thing's like, yeah, I got an amazing click-through rate and it's got a 100% average view duration. Yeah, well, those people, you know, those, your parents may not even go on YouTube very much. So what did YouTube learn about who to recommend that content to next? If your parents aren't on YouTube very much, They've learned nothing. They've learned nothing because they go, well, we're using audience behavior to figure out who to serve this content to next. So what you really want to have happen is organically you want people who have no idea who you are to find your video in either browse or suggested or search, and you want them to organically start watching when YouTube put that thumbnail in front of them as an impression. Once that happens... Um, and they, people who don't know you, that's the trick. People who have no idea who you are, who are on YouTube frequently, once they start engaging with your content, then you, YouTube starts taking those traffic signals and going, okay, 
we're starting to figure out who's a good fit for this video and they'll slowly find more people. So it's not that you're doing anything wrong. I just, you know, if you put if, if you put up a video and one it gets put in front of one person, they click and they watch the whole thing, you would have a 100% click through rate and a 100% average view duration. That doesn't mean that that video should be put all over YouTube. What is what YouTube is looking for, a video that performs at scale. All right? That means when it's put in front of a thousand people, does it still have a good click through rate and a good average view duration? When it's put in front of a million people, does it have a good average view duration and average cl- and a, a CTR? When it's put in front of a billion people, like Mr. Beasts, does it still have a good CTR and a good average view duration? All those things always go down over time. Like Mr. Beasts, CTR is it's like between. 4.7 and 5.1 in that area. It's it's rarely much over five. Most of his videos, I saw his metrics. It was like 4.7, 4.9. Um, some of them crested over five depending when they were a little bit newer, but over time they go down. The more people it's put, your videos put in front of, um, the, the higher potential it's put in front of people who aren't going to watch. So the, the broader the it does, the more the metrics come down. But YouTube knows that, and it knows what what a what a great CTR is at scale. So you don't have to worry about if you just looked at the number, it wouldn't make any sense. You'd go, well, I get a better CTR than Mr. Beast. Why do I not get recommended more? You don't have a better CTR with a billion impressions. You have a better CTR with six impressions. So really, really pay attention to that. Okay, um, Lara, spe- spectacular. Let me look at you. Let me see what this is. Tech, spectac. I will spell this right, Lara. I swear I can. I can type. I promise I can. Spectacular Lara. Oh, is this a kid's channel? Ah, that might be part of the problem too. So you're not even getting all the recommendations. So it's a kid's channel. Um, yeah, it's just your, your numbers are still low. It's, not, it's nothing wrong with that, pal. You just you, what, let it grow organically, okay? Because a lot of these, like I said, you're looking at, you know, you're looking at 74 views. You're looking at 124 views, 127 views, 93 views, 38 views, 40 views. 50, 151. So they're low views. So yeah, the numbers your numbers are going to be higher. What you want to have happen? Uh, I don't know who Lara is. I'm I'm guessing I'm not talking to Lara. I'm guessing maybe Lara's mom, parents, father. Um, if it is Lara, <laughs> I feel really bad that Lara's here listening to me. She's probably like, I'm a kid. Why are you talking to me like this? Um, if you're the parent who runs this channel, yeah, just uh, either you're the smartest little kid I ever knew. You're already paying attention to your CTR and AVD. Which case, Lara? Well, good on you. <laughs> But if it's the parent, just um, this is one of those things, you know, just try to make content that connects. I will say pretty good thumbnails. Happy birthday, Lara. Today we were in a warehouse full of toys. Interesting stuff. Look for stuff that's connecting. Like they seem to like when you're like, oh, we're in a warehouse full of toys. Got some better views. Or outdoor playground. playground. They, like, they like the outdoor playground stuff. Like when it was very specific things that she's playing on. Here's one too. Another outdoor playground with big slide. Got 437 views. Um, so that was interesting. Like the one up here that was an outdoor playground recently did a little better. And the one that was from two months ago did a little better. So see if you can capitalize on some of that outdoor playground stuff. Um, it seems like you've tried it a few times, but some are better than others, like better picture in the thumbnail nail. Um, don't be afraid to be compelling outdoor. Play- see, this is one thing that, you know, we're talking about kids out this one here, outdoor playground with big slide for kids and family. That sounds like a, uh, Sounds like a newspaper print ad, you know? Like it's like it's like I was looking at a listing on Craigslist. That's not very compelling. You should be like, you know, make it compelling. We found the coolest out, you know, the greatest outdoor playground uh, ever. The greatest outdoor playground, kids playground ever, you know, and make it exciting, you know. Make sure you put more color in this too. Get that pop to happen. I'm seeing more building and face. I'm seeing more Lara than I am like that cool looking playground. So that's the kind of thing like, you know, what do kids like? Big colors, you know, you know, um, get some for parents, get some, you get something compelling that's like really crazy, cool, exciting, awesome, huge, spectacular, colorful, fun. You know, use words that, that would compel people to want to click that rather than just like a, you know, outdoor playground with big slide. Very kind of stale. Be more compelling than that. Uh, let's see, where are we at? 
Uh, what was that? Appreciate the main. I use retired chef to get credibility to the cooking skills. Yeah, back on that one, pal. When you let people learn that you're a retired chef from inside of your videos, okay? That's the kind of stuff you save for the compelling elements. When someone goes, "Yeah, I watched this really great. Show me how to cook all that stuff. Uh, cook, uh, cook it yourself and eat. Cook and eat. Cook, grow it. Grow it. Cook it. Eat it. You know, something like that. You know, I was, I was, uh, I was spent time with um, this guy, a clueless, but. Uh, Bushcraft, clueless bushcraft. Tom, um, he's a he was huge on TikTok and he's on YouTube now. He's pretty big. He's about to get a silver play button, and we had a lot of long talk about his value prop. And he's like, well, you know, I I, I find animals and then I kill them and then I, I I you know cut them up and I show how to cook them and how to and how you know and then you know how to eat them and stuff. That's his thing. Really sweet guy, but he's you know like that's his whole bushcraft thing. And I said, oh, so that's your value prop. It's uh, catch, kill, cook, eat. And he was like. Holy cow! I'm gonna make that into T-shirts. Like, I'm keeping it simple. Like, what's your channel about? You know, everything, everything. We catch, kill, cook, and eat. Uh, so, with you know, with your thing, it's more about growing and eating it. So, make sure you really lean on that and save the retired chef thing for in there. So, when you're when you're making a video and you're cooking and stuff and you're going through it, that's a great little thing that someone learns along the way. Like, you know, I actually was a professional as you're showing them how to do it and cooking it up. You know, I actually was a professional chef in my, in a previous lifetime. So, this is one of the parts I really love is when I get to cook the things that I've grown in my garden. So people learn that about you. It's another interesting thing. It's like me. I was a professional musician um, for a lot of years, um, toured internationally. Um, you know, I've, I've worked with some of the biggest bands on the planet. But that's not something I put in my thumbnails. It's just something that people get to know about me later on, and they go, oh, yeah, that's what makes Daniel distinct. He's, you know, people like, which, which you know, YouTube guy do you like when you're looking for answers about how to grow a channel? A lot of people are like, oh, I like the hairy guy with the guitars. <laughs> just helps people remember who I am. It's sort of my, you know, it just makes me distinct in the pack. But I don't, you know, I wouldn't put that in my titles or anything or my playlist. Uh, so same thing with you. Just, you know, bring it up there. Let them know, you know, part of the story. Um, let's see. Daniel Batal doesn't like me to sleep on Sunday mornings. I do not, Eric. I want you up. I want you drinking whiskey. I want you talking to me here in the chat, my friend. <laughs> Good to see you, pal. Um, Daniel, if you were doing videos on news stories, three to five stories, how would you set up the title and thumbnail to make them engaging? Um, depends on the news stories. It says crypto inquiry. So I'm guessing if it's the news stories on, um, things about regarding crypto, um, I would be totally trying to leverage compelling elements. This is something I showed recently. Um, the title and the thumbnail to make them engaging. Step number one, um, know what you're going to name the video I as much as possible and try to get that dialed in because it makes it easier to write it. Um, if you were to look at crypto on the, on YouTube, you'd probably find some some interesting stories that are breaking uh, every you know, and it'll be they'll always be super compelling. Let me see if I can do crypto right. Um, you know, big ones like this. Look at this. Who's responsible for the crypto crash? One, you know, it's 1,900 views in a day. It's from Bloomberg, but right? You know, like I probably would have done a little better thumbnail than that. But that's a great title. Who's responsible for the crypto crash? That's the kind of news story people are interested in. Why did it crash, right? The, here's some other stuff that's going on. You know, like crypto outperforms tech in the third quarter. There's a little too much in this title. I think that that's... Um, uh, here's one crypto crash incoming. You might be surprised. Ooh, compelling. I probably wouldn't have done that as a thumbnail. That's a better thumbnail here. I like this one more from, um, cryptos, cryptos are us. Um, uh, uh, so what's his name? Gensler in trouble. So there's some stuff I can see the Bitcoin. Some of that stuff's a little better. Of course, uh, you know, Graham Stephan always nails it. Congress wants to ban investing stocks under attack. I probably would be, um, you know, looking for this kind of stuff that really screams crypto, Bitcoin, things like that. Um, those are the things I tend to look for, my friend. I'm trying to find something that really screams it. As for titling, same thing. I think people want to know, is crypto worth investing? I, so I'd be on your end, if I was going to be doing a crypto thing, I probably would be saying, like, what are the things that are people thinking about? Because um, crypto, like, took a big hit. Everything's taking a big hit. So I'd be making videos on that were very, like, very big. It's, you know... Is this the is is this the uh, could could buying could buying into crypto now make you millions you know tomorrow you know could could buying into crypto today make me make you millions tomorrow thinking about is it the right time to buy into crypto right now or buying into Bitcoin or buying into Ethereum or whichever one you're doing I think people are asking all those questions like ooh should I sell should I buy what's happening what's the future look like do things that are compelling that make people go you're not going to give them the answer but you get them very curious. Um, 
uh, th- th- you know, three cryptocurrencies you definitely want to buy in the dip, right? Because they're in the dip right now. Uh, and do things like that, and maybe you don't give away all of it, and you keep a little mystery in the thumbnail, and give the idea of making money and investing. Those kind of things I think are important. Think, think like your viewer. What is the target audience if it's going to be crypto inquiry? What's the stuff that they're super interested in right now? What's the stuff that people are going crazy for? Um, and then try to build something so that the title and thumbnail is very compelling and leaves a lot of questions. One of the things I tell a lot of people, when you're building packaging for stuff that you really want to win the, win the click, think about building packaging that the viewer has the most amount of questions when they read it. Not questions because they don't understand, questions because they do understand. Like if you said to somebody... Um, uh, three, uh, three stocks, three stocks you can buy right now that will triple your investment. You know, right. So that, you know, exactly what the video is about. Um, and you go, okay, it's buying stocks and it's ones that are supposed to be, but you'd be like, well, you know, wait a minute. What, what's there's three different stocks. What is, what are each stock? What, what, I mean, what's the price of them right now? I triple my investment. Well, you know, like I, there's all kinds of questions I have. What are the stocks? You know, what, how much do they cost right now? How much do I have to invest? So there's all these questions and curiosities that come up in a title and a packaging like that. You have to click to find out the answers to all of it. So the curi- curiosity could bring you in. You could do the opposite. You could say, um, uh, three stocks you definitely want to sell immediately um and you don't tell them that that what they are because you know then people go like holy you know which which one should i should sell them which ones are they do i do i have those stocks maybe i need to watch this video and find out because if i have them i want to know if which of the stocks you're talking about why should i sell them so the more of those kind of questions that come up that you can that you can get people to ask in their heads when they're reading it not because they're confused because they you've left these curiosity pockets that bring them in. Those are the things that can be really be compelling. Uh, let me see. Daniel, we love your opinion on our packaging for our show, Barbecue Happy Place. We think we are missing the mark with both the title and the thumb- thumbnail. Let's take a peek. Maddie and Kiki. How are you guys doing? Maddie and Kiki. Uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Uh, let me pull this up over here, pal. Let me go full screen so I can get my ugly face out of here. Uh, let's see. But you asked specifically about the titles and the thumbnails. Let me go here first. Um, a little busy. They're a little busy. Um, you've got yourself back to back. I kind of have this thing like that's a live stream, but that's a, you know, whatever. There's a lot going on here. This is one of the things like you have a guest on here. Do people, I, I think this is this thing that people try to put all their faces in there. But do they know who this is? Do they know who you are? You know, I think that people would know that because the name would show up as as Maddie and Kiki when this was served out there. I would say to you, simplify. What is a great, like this one here, you've got so much going on. You've got the cooked and then the after cooked and then you've got you guys in there. So when I'm looking at these thumbnails, it's like what should have been a here to here, I don't even think that that should have been it. I think there should have been just a... A simple picture was stuffed and smoked pork chops on the Ninja wood fire. So I wanted to see like a really great image of either it cooking or it plated, one of the two. And that's all you needed to do. And, and, then, and then get rid of all this other stuff. Same with here. It's like it's cooking and then you've got it over here and then there's the two of you. They're pointing this way. She's pointing up. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know which one's Maddie. I'm just going to name you. I'm going to say, okay, for today, you're Maddie and you're Kiki. And I'm, that's probably backwards, right? But let's say Kiki's pointing at the finished product and Maddie's pointing over there and there's a, your face. So I'm getting, my eye is drawn all over the place on that particular one. If you can see that, like it's just so much going on. Look at the arrow, look at that, it's cool. I didn't know that that moved like that. That's awesome, my little scribbles move. So simplify, keep it simple. If it's gonna be about, um, if the video's about cooking something on this cool ninja wood fired grill, then show, either show it cooking or show it finished. And then title-wise, um, let's see what's going on with titles. I want to see simpler thumbnails. Keep it really simple. Um, who's doing this well? Barbecue? Who's doing uh, Who else do I have in the barbecue space? Uh, Dogfather. Alton, one of my, uh, he was out for a bit. He had some health issues, but he's coming back now. Uh, he's very good. Uh, here's, here's Alton's. This just went up yesterday. Whoop, here's yesterday. He's doing a test where he's doing um, not cooked. He's just showing the raw meats. 
Super simple and delicious. Anyone can make these beef ribs. Boom! Right off the bat. Look at that. Beef rib. Bang. Couple thousand views. You know, it gets right into it. And it's great too. Look at this. How's this thumbnail for leveraging the autoplay? Watch what happens when I roll, scroll over this. Oh, I'm right into action. Like, see, it shows the raw meat and the red plate that he's on. And the minute I scroll over, it's that same thing starts moving. So he's been leveraging that autoplay, which is really cool. But he's been, Dogfather, Alton's always great. Look at some of these super great thumbnails. Look at that. You know, he's even got the Dogfather branded into the cutting block. But look at these. That's unbelievably great looking. Um, he's been leveraging stuff where he doesn't really even tell it's a smoked brisket, but he's been doing this so easy and delicious. I could cook this almost every day and people are like, well, oh, is, is that, wait, is that a brisket? You know, really, really compelling stuff. Um, I love Alton's thumbnails because when it comes to barbecue and he's a, sometimes he puts himself in it, but he's does a lot where he's just leveraging the image of the thing, right? 17,000 views. Cause he's showing the kettle smoked ribs or you know, this one didn't do quite as well. This was a uh, tri top on the grill. It, it just wasn't quite as it, the knife was in there and stuff. It was better when he showed the meat. That one did better for him. Uh, but he's done ones. Alton's had you know ones that did. Give me a second. Really, really well. You know, three point four million views. Brisket for beginners, and he shows the briskets. Pork ribs for beginners. You just see the pork rib on the grill. Sixty six hundred nineteen thousand views. Keep it simple, right? If you're doing barbecue, it should look like barbecue. Does this all look like barbecue to everybody? When everyone's looking at this, does everyone get the idea of backyard barbecue cooking on these grills? I mean, you get that vibe: chicken, ribs, um, brisket. You know, right? Everybody gets that going on. Do that. Think about that, my friend. I know you want to try to put every element in there. Simple. Keep it simple. Um, keep the title simple. Keep them understandable. Um, either go right for the how-to or um, Alton's been playing around with this new technique that has been doing pretty well for him, which is the the uh, the so simple and delicious kind of thing, and he doesn't give away exactly what's going on, and that's been working out well for him. So those are the things I think I would leverage, my friend. Just uh, uh, Maddie and Kiki, simplify. Don't feel like everything needs to be in there. Get the f food. If you're making food, get the food in there. Your video will say your name under it. They'll know it's Maddie and Kiki. Uh, let's see, where am I at here? I'm trying to catch up. I'm doing my best. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have several shorts I enlisted a few months ago thinking they were affecting my long-form views, but they, uh, they had about 5 million views already. I'm thinking of relisting some, I'm not sure. Any thoughts? Um, no, I don't. It, here's the deal. Listen, if you're making shorts, uh, the deal with content is content is content. Arc Solo, whatever your value proposition is, just make sure that all of your content represents that, right? On my channel, I help content creators make better videos, put them onto YouTube and grow an uh, audience around it. That's it. People who want to specifically make videos, learn how to make videos to put onto YouTube and then grow the channel, get people to start watching those videos. That's my, those are my people, right? So if I go live today and I start showing you how to smoke brisket, you'd be like, why are you showing us this, Daniel? That's not what, your channel's not about that. Same is true with shorts. Just make sure that your shorts, when I make a short, I'm talking about uh, you know how to make content, put it on YouTube, and grow a YouTube channel. It's just shorter. So why would you want to list videos that were, if you thought they were affecting your long-form views, if they were true to your value proposition, leave them on your channel. I don't see there's any reason why you shouldn't. Now, if you made shorts that you were being like just chasing the views and doing stuff that really didn't serve the needs of your target audience then yeah, that could be problematic because you got people like, oh, I don't care about your other stuff. I just thought the sh goofy little short you did was kind of funny. So what I would do is just make sure all of your content always serves the needs of a very specific target audience and you'll be fine. You'll never have to worry about listing or unlisting. I think I talked to you about it before here earlier. I said I enlisted some of my, I, I enlisted one video that had well over 2 million views because it was very Filmora specific and it was every time it got surfaced again, it was driving maybe 1,000, 2,000 views a day still, and it's years old. Um, it, it kept bringing people to my channel who just wanted to learn about Filmora, and that was problematic for me, and I, and I eventually had to make the decision just to unlist that and about five or six others that were really driving a lot of people here just to learn uh, specific video editing software. So there was a reason I did that, because I wanted to make sure I was heading in the right direction. So I physically made the mistake of having content on my channel that didn't really serve my value proposition. That's why I had to unlist it. But if you're just thinking, well, oh, they're shorts, and I, I don't think shorts should be on the same channel as long form, I disagree. I think as long as as long as long the um, content serves the needs of the value of the channel, then um, you're all set. You go to Peter McKinnon's channel, great example. If you go check out Peter McKinnon's 
um, what he's got going on over there, he's a great one to figure out how to make great shorts. Because if you go to his channel, Peter McKinnon, let's pull him up. You know what Peter's about. He's all about, you know, cameras and, uh, you know, that's Peter. He's um, Peter McKinnon is like an amazing photographer and he's got millions of, you know, what has he got? 5.8 million subscribers. And Peter is Peter. He tends to talk about coffee and things and cool stuff, you know. There's always coffee involved. He's always making coffee while he's, you know, just starting his videos and talking about um, photography and such. But here's like his shorts here. It's got 3 million views. It's a $350 miniature magnet camera. So his shorts even talks about cool camera gear. He, you know, these all, all these kind of cool stuff that he's into. Uh, he's always talking about coffee. So he's got coffee with all these weird little coffee makers. And that's him, right? Coffee and cameras. It's like coffee and camera with Peter. He can get away with it because he's always done it on his long form. So all of his stuff tends to stick to the things that he talks about regularly cool stuff you know unboxing uh this you know of some gear he's got that's just how he rolls peter's that guy who just uh you know he'll push some of his own merch in there because he's got pete's pirate life but people dig it like exactly what you see in his long form content he just made cooler vi- versions of uh short stuff his shorts are really well produced too so it's all the stuff people have come to love just think about that make sure don't take them off just because you think somehow people who like shirts aren't gonna like shorts aren't gonna like your long form if it serves their value, if it's the same kind of people, right? I always say this, like, if there's a really great band and I heard, you know, 30 seconds of a song that was really great, would I go, oh, I'm, you know, I only listen to the whole album or I listen to nothing. <laughs> you know? It's the music, right? If you play me if you play me one short song or you play me the whole album, I like the music. If I like the music, it doesn't matter if I'm only hearing a little bit of it or a lot of it. So the same is true with content. If you you know if you've got something that you can say in a sentence or two and it's really impactful, then it's a short. If you got something that needs to be done in a longer form video, then do it in a longer form video. If it's something that really requires a stream like this, as long as it's true to the value proposition, you're all set. Put it back up there. If it's not distracting, uh, let's see. Which one? Which YouTube guy do you like the best? <laughs> the one with the hair better than mine. <laughs> I don't know that my hair is better than yours, Evie. It's just different than yours. <laughs> Daniel, I changed up my thumbnail and title after your advice today. Thank you for your amazing advice. Hey, uh, very cool, man. Um, stay on it. Yeah, just stay on it, pal. I, I, I think you've got a very cool channel. I like some of the story stuff you did. Um, you know you know what connects. When you do something cool and people respond to it. I like the idea of, I really liked your video with it was the 100, uh, you know, mowing the 126 acre overgrown college campus. Yeah, it's compelling. Even someone who doesn't care about landscaping would go, what? I'm watching. I'm in. <laughs> Give me that. So much food discussion in this live show, right? <laughs> it's almost three. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to keep you up there. Professional chef's going, I got to go to the kitchen and cook something that I grew today. Uh, I'm trying to catch up. This is going so cool. Let me quickly. QQQ, any feedback about my new value prop and how I used it in my banner? Let me check, Evie. We were talking about this in group today. I want to see how you, what you went with. Or we were talking about it, I want to say today, but the days are blending together. Evie, I apologize. Um, uh, simplifying your systems and processes for easier content creation. Uh, I'm looking at it. Let me pull it up so you, everyone else can see it too. Here's the thing I still think you're circling the drain on, Evie. Your thing is for businesses. It's not for really content creators. Um, uh, I think that you need to get this right and get it right once. It's simplifying your simp- systems and process. It's too wordy. You're making me read way too much, and I'm still wrestling with it. Um, um, uh, the idea is you really need to be able to create a sentence without writing a title. Don't write a title and just say what it is you're trying to say. I always tell people this, and I'm like, well, tell me, tell me what it's about. And they immediately start crafting it into a title. Like, stop, stop, stop. Just tell me what the thing is about. You know, what's the value of the channel? It's like, well, the whole goal is, how, you know, I, I work with people who are in business who want to use, like, co- create content. Um, and I don't teach them how to make content, but what I do is I, I show them um, some of the tools that will make building that content easier so they can, you know, so they go, okay. Um, um, so is it, you know, is it, is it all the tools? Is it all the features, Evie? Is it, um, tools that help, uh, uh you know, it's, it's, I'm trying to say, how do we simplify it? We were talking about this in group. I, there's too many words there now. It needs to be not 
because uh, I'm what's jumping out at me is simplifying content creation. And you said, that's not what I do. I don't help people make content. What I do is I teach them the tools that they're already making content. This will, this will streamline it. Um, um, business tools, uh, you know, business tools for uh, there's something in there for streamlining content creation, uh, something like that, like simplify it, right? Uh, better tools for streamlining, but there's got to be business tools. There's something in there, and I want you to not use so many words, but it's really you're teaching the businesses specific how to use specific tools to streamline their content creation process. And you've got things in there like systems and processes, but it's like I every time I read it, if I went up to someone and said, simplifying your systems and processes for easier content creation, you didn't even mention business, and that's I know who you're targeting. So you've got to stop, and you've got to go, wait, wait. Wait, stop trying to write a title, figure out what the thing is, and then once you know exactly what it is the title is supposed to say, what, the, what it means, you know, someone says to me, like, what's your value prop? Before I built the value proposition, I say, well, I'm trying to teach people who want to uh, learn how to make videos, um, and then they, you know, like, figure out how to upload onto YouTube, and then they have to learn all the things on YouTube in order to try to grow a channel and get people to watch that, those videos. Well, how do I get that shorter, Right. I help creators make better content in order to grow their YouTube channels, right? Just how, you figure out how to take out the words that don't need to be in there and simplify it, simplify, but never lose focus on it and don't complicate it. And for me, that's complicating right now. So I would, I would rethink it, Evie. I think you're, I think you're circling the target, but I keep work, keep workshopping that in group and don't say, Hey, which one of these titles is better? Say, I'm going to take a short paragraph to explain exactly what I do and exactly who I make my content for. Now, how do I get that into a sentence? And let the, let the group kind of spitball that one. You know how we're pretty good at that in there. You're getting closer, though. You're definitely getting closer. Um, hey, Daniel, KMH family. Hold on a second. Let me get some of this. I've got so many screens on right now. I'm having a hard time reading. Uh, for our first video, we will be – oh, first video, really? Congratulations. Um, oh, this is um, this is um, uh, Maya's uh, mom. Excellent. Uh, the old brain sometimes retains a little information. Uh, for our first video, we'll be posting on our family channel. Would you recommend splitting the Vegas road trip video in two videos, or keep it one long video together? It's about thirty minutes. Cut it down. I'd probably do three. Be honest with you, I'd probably do three. If it's comp if you can edit it into three compelling sections. Uh, and then I try to get people to, the reason I would say that is 30 minutes is a long ask. 10 minutes is not a long ask. If you can break that into three sections, and what's cool is you can link those all together so that the number one video, when you cut the first part, do like a, you know, watch the part two here. but And then do the card, end screen, link in the description, and pin comment of the first video all pushes to the second half, the second piece. And then when they watch the second one, do the... Um, card and screen link in the description and pin comment all pushing to the third so what happens is instead of trying to put on one long video there you're going to do a different strategy where you're going to try to get in a longer average view duration on a shorter video um, and you're going to try to get them to watch another piece of content so they'll have two pieces of content in their recent watch history and that's going to be more impactful than having them watch you know 10 or 15 minutes of the video and bail out and they've gone okay well you've watched maybe half maybe less of one video see if you can get them to watch you know an average of maybe like you know 60 percent 70 percent of one then go on to watch the next and then go on to watch the next and go down the view funnel and then make a playlist that basically says something like you know uh our crazy road trip to to Vegas for my son's twenty first birthday, um, you know, and then build it that way. That was what it was, wasn't it? Son's twenty first birthday. Am I guessing? I, I, my memory is either spot on today or I'm making all this up. So yeah, create those. Um, we're trying to create view funnels. We're trying to get them engaged with multiple pieces of content. Thank you for the ten dollar soup chat, by the way. Um, uh, good luck with this one. You know what I said before we talked about that before. Make sure it's super compelling. Get them down the rabbit hole. Make sure it's not just like, hey, we're going to Vegas. Make sure you make it really compelling. And then don't just do um, – you can do like at the end of the title, part one, part two, or maybe whatever, but you somehow break it up. But I kind of feel like you almost shouldn't put a part one, part two because if someone starts seeing the part two, they might – not click because they haven't seen the part one. So what I would probably do is just try to keep them separate. You know, you know, the, uh, the adventure begins might be the first one, and then half the second one's like you won't believe what happened in the second one. And uh, you know, um, 
we finally made it or whatever is the third one, you know, where you're doing these things where you're piecing the titles and stuff together, where each one has its own uh, encapsulated title and story, but they're designed to be played together as one, two, three, but it's not part one, part two, part three that makes people feel like they, 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 ha- they have to watch them in a certain order. Um, it's because they might find the second one and that one should exist on its own and still be really cool and watchable. Uh, let me see. Okay. Listen, I've been talking here for a while. Thank you very much for hanging out today, Megan. Thanks for all your help. I appreciate it. Everyone. Uh, I hope that was helpful. If you have any more questions, ask them down below. I'll try to do some of these ones more loose like this more often where we can pull up channels, just kind of talk about growth, but, um, everyone have a great day. Enjoy your weekend and I'll, I'll talk to all you guys soon.